The following is a special presentation of TNN Motorsports. In the sand hills of North Carolina stands a rock. The NASCAR Winston Cup Series will race here for the 69th time today. Champions have been crowned here. And today, another can all but lock up his first title. While a seven-time champion has been showing his strength of late. All of that and much more as we preview the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 live on TNN Motorsports. nitty-gritty just four races remain to settle the 1999 nascar winston cup series championship and today the nascar winston cup teams have come to the rock the north carolina speedway the pop secret microwave popcorn 400 is live on tnn motorsports good afternoon everybody i'm eli gold welcome to rockingham north carolina unseasonably cold but nevertheless a beautiful day to go racing and another chance for Dale Jarrett to try and put his name on this championship for the 1999 season. Buddy Baker will be joining us later in the telecast. He's bothered by what we in Alabama call the creeping crud, a bit of a cold and the flu and the cough and he'll be along a bit later on but Dr. Dick Bergren as healthy as per usual is alongside and of all the storylines here this weekend maybe the new pit road is the biggest one of them all. You know, there's always something new at Rockingham, it seems, and indeed the pit road is a huge story today. It goes all the way through turn one and into turn two as well. It's going to present new challenges for the drivers. It'll be a major piece to talk about, Eli. And why don't we start talking about it right now by heading down to our pit commentators for this afternoon. Steve Burns, the pit lane has been the talk of everybody in town. Yeah, that's the headline this week. Let's elaborate a little bit, guys. For the first time since they've been racing here, since 1965, all 43 cars will pit here on the front stretch. Track officials had to put down 3,500 tons of asphalt and concrete, and it took 20,000 man hours to do it. But really, the big number here, Ralph Shaheen, is that pit road is now 1,400 feet long. That's right, Steve, and the speed limit on pit road today will be 45 miles an hour. Now, the entrance of pit road is pretty much the same, but to get all the way down to turn number two at 45 miles an hour is going to take these drivers just about 30 seconds. Race speeds here, Glenn Jarrett, per lap, about 25 to 26. Oh, that's exactly right, Ralph. You know, it would appear that the man in black is back to his winning ways. Not since 1995 has Dale Earnhardt, and this is the man, <laughs> won more than two races in a single season. Now, he starts from deep in the field today, 37th, but anytime you're racing at the Rock, back there a little ways, anytime you race at the Rock, you cannot count out the Intimidator. Win, lose, or crash, Earnhardt always stands tall in the eyes of his fans. He's certainly been in the thick of things lately, including a controversial spin of Terry Labonte on the last lap in Bristol that enabled Dale to claim the win amidst a mix, amidst a mix of cheers and jeers. But last week was vintage Earnhardt. He charged from way back in the field, 27th starting position, took the lead from Dale Jarrett with four laps left to go in the race and went on to claim his third win of the year, including a sweep with Talladega. Right now, he is wide open on my right foot, moving around behind me. And let's ask him the question. Things are obviously different this year, Dale. You're a lot more racy, a lot more competitive. What is the difference? Well, I think we found a balance on these Monte Carlos. Uh, Richard and the guys worked really hard and got the cars a lot better. So just uh, really understanding the race cars better. We got the balance ready. Qualifying wasn't great down here, so we missed, missed it big down here. But Mike Skinner seemed to be a little off, too. So we're uh, adjusting, and I think raceway, race that setup, we may be OK. Uh, yeah, but you like starting in the rear. You like passing I don't all those like guys. Starting in the rear, I don't like passing them. But I like to be out front all the time. <laughs> That's Dale Earnhardt, Eli. Of course, qualifying wasn't all that great at Talladega a weekend ago either. Look at those numbers. Three wins here at Rockingham. A lot of guys would love to have that. But look how tough the tracks are where Dale has done the best. Nine wins at Bristol, nine at Darlington, nine now at Talladega. It doesn't get any tougher than that. And the man in black has always seemed to find his way to victory lane. But 
as fine as his year has been, no one's season is any better than that of Dale Jarrett and Steve Burns right now. It's a 246 point lead heading down the stretch run. Eli Dale Jarrett walks tall here in Rockingham as the Winston Cup points leader. Last week in Talladega, Dale Jarrett started 17th deep in the pack, found himself mired in traffic. It was tough for him to move up. But crew chief Todd Parrott and the team kept adjusting on the four tours for Dale Jarrett. DJ finally worked his way to the lead on lap 114 and led a total of 37 laps. He was in contention to the checkered flag, but finished second to Dale Earnhardt. And I guess, Dale, all things considered, it might have been a victory here today. You're going to start third, a good place, and you've got a, a race car you called Old Reliable, maybe. Well, yeah, we hope that it is anyway. It's a, a car that uh, has been good to us as far as getting testing uh, started with uh, the Taurus, but uh, we haven't run that many races with it, but it's a good driving race car, and uh, hopefully by the end of the day we can get it to the front. You guys feel pretty confident today? I uh, feel pretty good. There's some cars that are quite a bit faster than we are. Uh, our car seems to stay pretty good on long run, but we're not very fast on new tires, And but that's been the history of our uh, racing here, and, and I guess that's the reason we finished second a number of times because we've had late cautions and and people have beat us uh, on those shorter runs but uh, i like our chances all right best of luck and eli that won't be the last time we hear tires today here at rockingham no tire wear tire management that's the by word or by words here at the rock there you see the nascar winston cup points uh, you know the storylines already but taking it further back how dominant is dale jarrett right now look at that better than a thousand points back are Ward Burton and Mike Skinner. But remember this, folks, 11th and 12th spot, they are only separated by four points. 13th and 14th, they're only separated by 11. So there are a lot of battles on the line here today as we go racing in the pop secret microwave popcorn 400. When we come back, Jeff Gordon and Brian Weitzel, their story when we return to The Rock. It would be so Jeff Gordon up on the stage here right now getting his victory uh, or getting the accolades for pre-race stuff here today. We hope to be able to have a word with him in just a second. Eli, Jeff Gordon is going to start fourth here today. He was the winner of the True Value Racer of the Week Award at Talladega. He ran more laps in first, second, or third spot a week ago than anybody else did over the course of that 500 miles. And you see how good Brian Weitzel has been. Look at those two wins in three races. And as you look back to year number one of many of those great crew chief careers, look at Ray Evernham. Remember back in 1993, 30 events and Dick Bergman, not a single win among that whole lot. So year number one doesn't necessarily tell the whole story, but you got to like Brian Weitzel's start. Do you wonder if they taught him tire management at Virginia Tech? Well, probably not, but this is the world's greatest college to teach someone tire management. This racetrack is built with lots and lots of rocks in it. It tends to chew away at the tires. The tires don't really wear out. They just get slower. And so the real responsibility of a crew chief is Get the car set up so you can get the most out of that set of tires. You know what else we always talk about here at The Rock? We always talk about Pontiac, probably more so at this racetrack than we do anywhere else at the Winston Cup Series goes. Well, this is really Pontiac's flat-out best racetrack. No question about that. Pontiacs have won six of the last 11 fall events here. Rusty Wallace has won four out of his five races in a Pontiac here. Kyle Petty with a big win, led all but eight laps in October of 92. Today, however, they're going to be watching Tony Stewart. You see his Pontiac here winning for the first time in his Winston Cup career at Richmond and John Andretti has had a great year winning in a Pontiac at Martinsville. Bobby and Labonte, however, he's the guy that really is going to carry the flag today. He's got four wins so far this year in a Pontiac. And Glenn, that green car is one that everybody is keeping an eye on here this afternoon. Yeah, and it's also been a car that everybody's been chasing for most of this year. He has led, I think, uh, uh, some laps on every super speedway, the, every uh, track over a mile in length this year. You've had an incredible year, but uh, still looking for that first win here. Could it come today? Well, I don't know. Uh, this has uh, not really been that great of a track for us, but uh, last spring we ran uh, third, had a good car, and led some laps. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can uh, learn off that and, uh, you know, make the right decisions today and uh, get our car handling right. You know, as you know, Rockingham's a, a handling racetrack where the tires, will, uh, the asphalt eats the tires up and the, the it'll change from the first lap to the 50th lap when you need to pit or when you want to pit. And uh, hopefully we can get it where it's good and consistent throughout that run. 
Well, Bobby goes off fifth today. It's a great starting position, Eli. It is, and statistically, Pontiac's always behind the eight ball. They only have eight full-time Pontiac teams compared to those for Ford and Chevrolet. You see 21 and 16, respectively. So just by sheer numbers, it's likely that Ford and Chevy would outdo Pontiac. But this year, and Steve, we've got to add Ward Burton's name to that mix. This year, particularly here at The Rock, Pontiac's done well. Eli Ward Burton won his first and only Winston Cup race here in 1995. It's been 123 races since Ward has celebrated in victory lane, but Ward Burton and car owner Bill Davis have had a strong 1999 season. They threatened to win in Las Vegas when Ward battled with his brother Jeff. In fact, Ward has led 11 different races in 1999. Last week at Talladega, Ward battled for a second win, finished fourth. His second consecutive top five finish in a row. And Ward, if you believe in momentum being a factor in other sports, being the same in motorsports, today could be a good day for you. Yeah, it could. Uh, the Caterpillar team has been giving me better cars every week. They're getting smarter with the cars, and consequently, it makes us run better. Communication is getting better. We've, we've learned even stuff from this latter part of the season about what I want in the car, how to relay it to Tommy so that we get the chassis handling right. So we're really excited about the day. The car's been pretty good since it got off the truck, and we'll just hope for a little lady luck and uh, race hard all day. All right, Ward Birding starting 11th today, Eli. Currently ninth in NASCAR Winston Cup points. Not bad for a single car team. When we come back, Ricky Rudd is in the TNM spotlight right after these messages when we return to The Rock. It was a tough day on the track in the fall of 1996. Robbie Gordon and Bill Elliott collide early in turn three. Then Robert Presley and Lake Speed got together in a big way. Wally Donenbach and Jeremy Mayfield felt the wrath of the rock, but avoiding it all was Ricky Rudd, who got his only win of 96. That extended his streak at that point to wins in at least 14 years in a row. Well, right now, Ricky Rudd is looking to extend that winning streak to 17 years in a row of getting at least one victory a year. Now, Ricky, last week at Talladega, you had a Robert Yates engine in the car and technical support from the crew. Now, you're not running the Yates motor this week. How come, and do you still get the tech support? <laughs> well, we're kind of on our own. I think it was kind of like Cinderella last week. We got a little taste of... Uh what it's like to have the you know the motor under the hood and, the, and like you say the technical support you know this week we're kind of on our own uh, those guys they got more uh, more important things for themselves to worry about like a winston cup championship so pretty much left it with robert if you guys get caught up you got an extra motor laying around send it our way so uh, maybe we'll get lucky it might be one in the car before phoenix so we'll just have to wait and see but uh, sure it'd be nice if we had one today Doing it on his own, however, Eli, will not be a problem. He can certainly do it. He'll start 15th here today. He's got great support from the guys who have stayed with him. Look at those career numbers for Ricky Rudd. But think about it. Many of the crew members working with Ricky today were in elementary school when his 16-year winning streak began. Great honor there for Ricky Rudd. And don't forget, with races coming up at Phoenix, at Homestead, those are racetracks, including here today, where certainly Ricky Rudd could get himself to victory lane. And now, Dick Berger, that brings us to the Mark Martin story. Qualifying at Rockingham, it's always the Mark Martin story. It seems that way. He himself called it a beautiful run, and indeed it was a beautiful run. He set a record for the fall race here in this qualifying run. He already had the record for the spring race, so that pretty well wraps it up. It's his fifth pole ever here at Rockingham. First of the year, though, that's the surprise. Glenn Jarrett. We're standing alongside of Mark. He's uh, putting the uh, last-minute stuff on to get ready. Mark, we were joking around a little yesterday about uh, calling this place Markingham, and uh, you have had incredible success here. Ten Bush wins, three Winston Cup wins. You won the last race here in the spring. What is it about this place you do so well? Well, I don't know. Uh, one of the things is the banking. Um, I like bank racetracks, and I like pretty good size racetracks. A mile is uh, about right for me, and um, it's just been real kind to me. I don't know why I uh, seem to find the chassis set up fairly, fairly decent here. Well, that's uh, that's a mild understatement. Fairly decent. He's got a great starting position, Eli, but the pole position hadn't always been kind to the guys here. It really hasn't, Glenn. The pole sitter has finished on the average 11th place 17 times. The pole winner has not even finished the event. Maybe Mark changes that today. We're back in a moment. In October of 1997, race day was rain day, so the event was postponed to Monday. Points leader Jeff Gordon had a scare, tagging the outside wall, but he recovered to finish fourth. 
Bobby Hamilton, meanwhile, grabbed the lead. Less than 20 laps to go. He hung on to win. Hamilton got quite a greeting from crew chief Robbie Loomis. Remember that in victory lane? Welcome back to Rockingham, everybody. Uh, Dick, you can I can just shake hands if you want to keep it at that if things go well. Let's talk about the pit crew championship. That's always a great part of the fall race weekend here at Rockingham. And yesterday, no exception as we take a look at some of the highlights. Oh, the crews all brought special cars just for this event. And I'll tell you what, the crews are really into this deal. You can see there the 21 team getting ready to go over the wall and do their thing. Uh, the big winners, Bobby Labonte's bunch did well. Joe Nemechek's crew finished in second spot. See the gas man here ready to go. Uh, Steve Park's crew ready to jump over the wall. Awful lot of excitement here. You're going to see much more of this thing later on TNN. Right, so as you see, some of the highlights of the action yesterday, as the doctor mentioned, Bobby Labonte's team did come away with the win, and if you would like to see the entire coverage of that Union 76 Rockingham Pit Crew competition, November 28th, 5 o'clock Eastern Time and Pacific Time, right here on TNN Motorsports. Of course, Dick Bergman is alongside us live right now, but early this morning, literally at the crack of dawn, as per usual, the doctor said, see you guys later. He went to the garage to find out what's going on. So why don't we check in on that recorded report from Dick Bergman earlier this morning in the Rocks Garage. Nobody slept in today. Crews were up at 4 o'clock in the morning to get here at the racetrack so they could work on the springs, the shock absorbers, the rear end gears, and the weight distribution on the race cars. See, chassis are more important here than almost any other place because this place eats tires. Dale Jarrett wasn't happy with his car in the final practice yesterday, so they are changing 10 separate items in the front end of the race car. Their game plan in the race today, try to win. That way they lose no points at all. Jeff Gordon has won three of the last five races here at Rockingham. They expect the groove to be a bit lower today as a result of the cooler weather, and they are setting the car up for that. He will take it easy on new tires. You won't see Gordon rocketing off when they bolt four on today. Many of the mechanics in the garage this morning picked Tony Stewart's number 20 Pontiac to win the race. The car was very fast in happy hour this morning. They're changing one spring, one shock, and the anti-roll bar. This will be quick. This will be quick, too. Mark Martin's number six. They were a little bit tight in happy hour. They have adjusted for that this morning. Today is the 10th anniversary of his first ever win, and that win happened right here at Rockingham. So that's what the doctor found for us in the garage this morning. When we come back, a final thought or two, and we close in on the start. Winston Cup Racing from the Rock is live on TNN Motorsports. Welcome back to the North Carolina Speedway in Rockingham. Here's a great way you can use your computer as an online garage pass for today's NASCAR Winston Cup race. Just log on to TNNRacing.com. It's TNN's special website with the latest news from Rockingham, in-car camera views, and live scanner talk between the drivers and the crews. Log on right now if you'd like and get the latest multimedia motorsports information. TNNRacing.com. Closing in on the start, let's go back to the pits. A quick update on the latest bit of news, Glenn Jarrett. Well, thanks, Eli. You know, the biggest thing we noticed this morning was it is considerably colder here today than it has been all during race weekend. Uh, could create a few problems for the guys. Most of the crew chiefs say they built plenty of flexibility, versatility, changeability in their chassis. Spring rubbers everywhere except on the uh, left front, so uh, they should be able to deal with it. Here's Steve. Thanks, Glenn. Crew Chief Robbie Reiser, the crew chief for Matt Kenseth, told me this morning you want that car to be as soft as possible. By that, you want softer springs, softer shocks, so the car doesn't bounce a lot on the racetrack. Now, the other thing that can really help those tires stay uh, stuck to the racetrack is the driver. If the driver's easy off the gas and easy back on it, that'll keep that front end of the car from sliding. Ralph Shaheen. One more note about the new pit road here at Rockingham. Here on the front straightaway, everything is the same. It's very flat all the way across. As you get down around the corner, there is an elevation change, and it starts to slope off down towards the inside of the racetrack. As the crews are changing tires, if one starts to slip away from you, it is, Eli, going to roll all the way to the inside, and that can become a big problem and potentially a penalty. We'll all find out as we watch that together. Bottom line, Dick Bergman, you got to like the degree of competition and the parity you see here at Rockingham. I love this racetrack. I really do because it's so much fun to watch. Puts a lot of pressure on the crews to get the cars just right. The drivers have to conserve their tires, but they have to go fast too. It's a fun place to watch a race. Well, folks, kick back and join us. We're together for the next three and a half hours. Get a bag of pop secret and pop it in the microwave. We're coming back to go racing. NASCAR Winston Cup competition from the Rock is next 
here on TNN Motorsports. Back in a moment. is a special presentation of TNN Motorsports. It has been a storybook season, replete with magical rain dances, newly crowned princes, Cinderella stories, remarkable rebounds, devastating disappointments, rejuvenated wizards, but the book is not complete, and as the final four chapters are written, one man has focused all of his magic on being number one. And to be number one, the magic number for Dale Jarrett is 13. 13th or better in the remaining four races, and a championship is his. But here at The Rock, Dale's number has always been two. In six out of the last seven races at North Carolina Motor Speedway, the number 88 team has finished second. Whether the reason be pit strategy, tire rotation, or simply the will of the racing gods, if you're Dale Jarrett and you cast your lot at Rockingham, history says you can forget about the other 42 possibilities. But living in the past buys nothing in the quest for the Winston Cup. As remarkable as it may seem, Dale Jarrett has started 24 races here at Rockingham, but he's never won. But Dale Jarrett fans, take heart. Today, he's going to start from the second row. He goes off third, and he's got nearly 20 cars at his dispose disposal back at the shop in Charlotte. But he's pulling out a race car he calls Old Reliable. It's a car he hasn't raced in over a year, but it's a winning race car. For Ricky Rudd, the magic number is 17. With a new Robert Yates Gleam, the number 10 car proved last week at Talladega to be capable of extending the amazing 16-season winning streak. And don't forget, three years ago, when the streak lay in the balance at 13, The Rock yielded Ricky his only victory of the year, keeping the victory train and Rudd's reputation at one-mile tracks intact. Ricky Rudd's quest to find that victory for season number 17 here at Rockingham. He has chosen a race car that had never seen a racetrack until Friday. For those who are knocking on the door of their first Winston Cup win, the magic number is one. Michael Waltrip had positioned himself for a visit to Victory Lane last week when the engine went south. has had victory in his sights this season, but has yet to close the deal. If you want to play the numbers today, don't count out these three. And once again this week, Michael Waltrip may be the one of that trio that has the best chance to win here today at Rockingham. He starts 22nd, then the other guys, Kenny Wallace, had to requalify his engine locked up in qualifying. He goes off 26th. And Mike Skinner, he had to take a provisional. Could today be the day that one of these guys breaks through and gets that first win? Would it be Walter Wallace or maybe Mike Skinner? We're going to find out right here on TNN coming up next live from The Rock. Great look at the North Carolina Speedway in Rockingham. If you like your racing competitive, you've come to the right place. Ten different winners in the last ten fall races here. That's the name today, the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400. It is live from Rockingham right here on TNN Motorsports. Right now, though, time for the National Anthem. Award-winning country music star. Laurie Morgan. Senior female vocalist of the year in 1992. 
Miss Lori Morgan with our national anthem here at the North Carolina Speedway in Rockingham. The flyby taking place right now as we take a look at NASCAR Winston Cup Series points. You know the storyline, 13th or better, as you've already been told. That's all Dale Jarrett has to do, regardless of what Bobby Labonte does. And the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship would belong to Dale Jarrett here in 19. 99. The fans looking skyward as the Jets fly overhead. And we welcome you to Rockingham. I'm Eli Gold. A pleasure to have you with us here for TNN Motorsports live coverage from The Rock. And this truly has been one of the most competitive races we've seen. As we said, 10 different winners in the last 10 fall events here at Rockingham. He wasn't with us on the pre-race show, bothered by a cold and the flu and a cough, but Buddy Baker is alongside now. He assures me he is no longer infectious, but nevertheless, Buddy, <laughs> great to have you. What, what's happened to me, a lot of people <laughs> wish what happened to Eli many times. I do have a pretty bad cold. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing very well. <laughs> Poor old buddy. He's been uh, working with an apothecary lined up here on our desk right now. He's got everything going. And the bottom line is, when you talk about this racetrack, there are a lot of guys who have gotten sick at this racetrack. Been trying to battle car setup. Been trying to battle tire wear, tire management. It's all part of the headache that at times can be rocking him. Well, <clears throat> really what you have to do is just ease in the gas in the corner. Don't break the tires loose. Get that forward bite. <laughs> Don't sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Bergman is along side. Doctor, you and I touched on it in the pre-race as well. The fact that Pit Road is now merely on the front straightaway. No longer is there a back pit, but the design is something that's given some of these teams something to think about. Well, it's a retrofit. This racetrack was built in the 60s and to allow all the cars to pit in the front. What's now going to happen is many of the top drivers are going to go down Pit Road, down the straight part. Then they're going to face a real hard left. You're looking at it here. And the crews can't help talk them into the pits because they can't see them. The drivers can't see the pit as they head for it. So some of them have painted stock car graffiti on the outside wall their car numbers so they can find their way into the pits those pits are going to be a story today no doubt and certainly glenn and steve and ralph will keep you updated down on the pit lane throughout the course of the day when we come back we'll fire the engines we'll be set to go racing as tnn motorsports is live at the rock back in a moment TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 is being brought to you by Pontiac, who invites you to visit TNNRacing.com to register for an online chat with Tony Stewart. By Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. By the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by XI, NASCAR Select, the official automotive battery of NASCAR. 
gentlemen, start your engine. Dave Gottfriedson from Food Lion with the command to fire the engines here at the Rock. As we prepare to go racing here on a unseasonably cool day. No, it's cold. It's past <laughs> cool. It was cold earlier this morning. Take a look at the layouts of this racetrack if you're not familiar with it. 1.017 miles around, so that means 393 laps will make up the 400 miles here today. You see how the banking varies from turns one and two to the other end of the speedway, turns three and four. Now the AutoZone race analysis. Brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. 45 miles an hour, Dick Berg. We're not pit road speed, and with this lengthy pit road, it'll seem to those guys that they're out there all day Sunday just going from one end of the pit lane to the other. It's going to take them longer to get down pit road than it will to make a lap at full speed, in fact. Why don't we take a look at the starting lineup for this afternoon's event? First poll of the year for Mark Martin, Jeremy Mayfield's best start of the season. Dale Jarrett, he's finished second here at the Rock in six of the last seven events. Jeff Gordon's won three of the last five races here. Bobby Labonte's in the title fight. Jeff Burton's had top fives last couple of visits here. Great effort for Ricky Craven. Nice to see him qualifying seven. He's got a lot of his old-time people with him. Uh, the, Scott Maxim is with him on the engine, and uh, he's got John Munson there helping him, and Charlie Presley. All of them have been with him in good runs in the past. Jeff Prebodine, Ken Schrader. Ward Burton turns 38 years of age tomorrow. Joe Nimichek, the winner in Loudoun, New Hampshire. Terry Labonte and Wally Dallenbach. Ricky Rudd had the great showing at Talladega a weekend ago. Rick Mast has run well here. Matt Kenseth in his fifth NASCAR Winston Cup race of the year. John Andretti. Kenny Irwin looking forward to going racing. Four top tens in his last six races. And Buddy Baker, I, I know your, your voice is not doing all that well, <laughs> but confidence in what you're doing in the case of Kenny Irwin. But all of a sudden, you're starting to get a whole sack full of top tens. It's got to help you. Yeah, he's coming around every every uh, race. I think he next year will really be something to watch. Taking a look at the remainder of the starting grid, Kyle Petty owned this racetrack for years. Three Rockingham wins. Derek Cope, Elliot Sadler. He had himself a good run going at the at the Talladega last weekend. Look for your favorites. 54th consecutive Rockingham start for Darrell Waltrip. Bobby Hamilton won here in 97. Dale Earnhardt, third win of the year last week. Jimmy Spencer, he was real quick and happy hour here yesterday. And look at the fellows who are new. You saw Stacy Compton for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series moving into the number nine Melling car. And there's Mike Bliss, second race of the year in that number 30. Those who didn't qualify, Ed Barrier, Rich Bickle, the veterans Dave Marcus, and Hutch Strickland. Closing in on the start, couple of laps away. We'll be back to bring it to you when we return to Rockingham. Field getting set to come to the green here at the North Carolina Speedway in Rockingham. We've got onboard cameras with you today for a number of teams. You've got Mark Martin giving us rides today. We've got Bobby Labonte giving us a ride. Kenny Irwin's going to give us the ride around the rock. So too will Ted Musgrave. Robert Presley's got onboard cameras for you. So too does Dale Jarrett, the point leader. Bill Elliott also. So we've got you covered along with Jeff Burton. Green flag is in the air. We are going racing at Rockingham. 393 laps of competition.
Martin Leeds, 22nd event this year that he has led. This is the 31st race of the season. And the 14th race here at Rockingham in Winston Cup competition that he has led. Wally Dallenbach, as the sun now peeks out from behind one of the clouds, illuminating this one-mile layout. Some of the strong contenders deep in the field are going to have to be very, very careful with their tires that they don't burn them off in this charge to the front. Mike Skinner, past winner, Bobby Hamilton, Dale Earnhardt, Steve Park, Darrell Waltrip, all deep, deep in the field. Meanwhile, Mark Barton's got a clear field right in front of him. He doesn't have to worry at all. He can take that car any place he wants on the racetrack. The others are going to have to group, gouge, push and shove, and eat up their tires, maybe. Riding with Kenny Irwin right now. He's an 18th spot trying the outside against 98 Rick Mast. You see Schrader, the skull machine, just ahead of Kenny Irwin. And Schrader's not been able to get back to the low side of the racetrack. Got him set up a little bit tight today. He's been too loose in the last three races, so they're starting a little tight so he can hang on to it better. There's the spread from first place on back to eighth, tenth, fifteenth, twentieth right there. And look at Mayfield. Mark having Martin just pulled over on the back straightaway and let the 12 for Jeremy Mayfield just go right on by. So we swap the lead around in lap number four. Jeremy Mayfield showing the way. on new tires are the most important laps in the entire life cycle of that tire. Mark Martin does have a habit of taking it a little easy on the first few laps. Don't think there's something wrong with either his car or the 24 car. Jeff Gordon, both those guys are going to cruise when they have brand new tires. Let the others go ahead and be the rabbit. Well, it's the air pressure in the tires. You have to let them build up so they start working well. He has a low air pressure in the tires right now. If he runs long, they get up to what he likes to feel in the car and he'll move back to the front. Dale Jarrett last week took his time at Talladega, then all of a sudden there he was running up front. So you're right, early in these runs, not always indicative of what the rest of the afternoon is going to hold for you. Big money on the line here this afternoon. It's the first ever Rockingham purse of over $2 million. How would you like to have a one-third increase in the size of your paycheck as we watch the battle for first 27% increase in the money today over last year. New leader is Dale Jarrett as he makes the pass to the inside of Jeremy Mayfield. Looking back from Jarrett. Mayfield just settling right in. So in the first eight laps, we've had Mark Martin, Jeremy Mayfield, and now Dale Jarrett as the race leader. Five points. That's very important in the, in the points race uh, to get that. And Jeff Gordon back here, he looks like his car is working very well. If I don't pick up here, I'm going to be in Charlotte when this thing's <laughs> over. <laughs> there you see Mayfield come running by, right back inside of Dale Jarrett. Mayfield has been a rocket ever since they unloaded that car here at Rockingham. Uh, they have speed charts for each of the various practice sessions. He has been in the top three in every single one of those, including the last practice session last night. Mayfield, you remember, ran in the top five all day here a couple of years ago in 97. He was fourth with 25 laps to go. Then there was a spinning car that put him into the wall, and Jeremy ended up finishing 14th, but he's always been around the front. His teammate, Rusty Wallace, has also run very well in practice sessions, and they did absolutely nothing for that car this morning. There's Ricky Rudd, number 10, inside of the 42 of Joe Nimichek, the 43, the STP car of Andretti. Ricky Rudd trying to keep that streak going. He has won at least once, but never more than twice in each of the last 16 seasons. Mark Martin heading in the forward direction now, running in third spot. DJ back to fourth position. Now with Jeff Burton outside of Wally Dallin back in the 25. That's for fifth place. 
James Burton had a good qualifying run. He's had a tough time qualifying this year. Started today's race in the sixth spot. He said the only thing they're worried about that car is it does tend to slip and slide. They can't seem to get quite as much grip into it as they'd like. Made some minor changes to it, the changes to it this morning to try to help that. And, and Dolan back there, he's 34th, and I'm going to have to give it up, guys. Thank you for having me here, but I'm going to take off. Are you really, yeah. buddy? Yeah, I'm going to have to give it up. Well, don't do that. Maybe get us double clutch. <laughs> no, no I, think I better head for the house. Well, feel better. Well, thank you, man. And thank you very much. Thanks for giving it a try. Yeah, Buddy Baker, unfortunately, not uh, feeling up to snuff here today and uh, gave it the yeoman's effort, as you'd expect. But, uh, Doctor, pull up a chair. Okay, we're here. And uh, Buddy's going to rejoin us, of course, next week in Memphis. He'll be with us in Memphis for the NASCAR Bush Series race, the Samstown 250, and then on to Phoenix uh, to wind this season up. That is Jeremy Mayfield, the race leader, by a half second. Gordon, Martin, Jarrett, and Burton near top five. By the way, if you're a Bobby Labonte fan, he has now lost six spots in the last couple of laps. There he is, number 12 on the running order, number 18 on the roof as we ride with Bobby right now. The last couple of laps have not been particularly good ones for him. We're early, only 16 laps in. GNN Motorsports with you at The Rock. Back with more in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Jeremy Mayfield leads the pop secret microwave popcorn 400 live here at the Rock. Good three wide battle. Ricky Craven in the 50 there comes out with that position. Ricky's still running a strong sixth. And he's running way up high on the racetrack, almost into the wall. In fact, he's running so high. The guy that's right in front of him is Jeff Burton in the number 99 car. He doesn't like upstairs. He calls running high a crutch for a bad handling car. But he's going to have to go up there in order to keep Craven from passing him. That's 10th place you're riding with right now. Let's see how high Ricky Craven in the 50 goes. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. High enough to get alongside Burton. Jeff Gordon's line has moved up as well, as has Ward Burton's. That's for fifth place. Yesterday in the Bush race here at Rockingham, they pretty much ran the bottom of the racetrack, but those cars don't have nearly the horsepower the Winston Cup cars do. And already, this early in the event, we're seeing drivers testing the different lines. Some running low, some running in the middle, some running up high. That's one of the things, look at this, get ready for three wide. That's one of the things that's so much fun about Rockingham is watching the drivers test all the different lines to see which one will work best for them. Steve, they are using every inch of this racetrack right now. Yeah, and that's an interesting concept that uh, Dick Burton was talking about, Eli. One crew chief told me this morning, you'll see guys run the high side, you'll see some run the low side, but you'll also, also see guys start on the low side, and while it appears that they're washing up the racetrack in the middle of corners, what they're really doing there is saving their tires. If they jerk down on the steering wheel to try and hold it, they're going to wear those tires out. So you might see some guys washing up early in the run. Second place about to swap right there, but Dale Jarrett couldn't make the jump. He also saw a quick look at Ricky Rudd seconds ago while Steve was chatting about on-track strategies. And Ricky Rudd is one of those whose car is not handling well. He was all the way back to 18. There's Ricky, and you see him climbing the banking. The 23 is Jimmy Spencer, who was fifth in happy hour here yesterday afternoon. Now second place swaps around. Give it to Dale Jarrett, three-tenths of a second behind the race leader, Jeremy Mayfield. Jeremy Spotter has just called down to him to tell him, nice job, you're running nice and smooth. They've done nothing but praise Jeremy for this entire race, as well as he should. Uh, he's doing a great job. Jeremy's only top 10 finish here was a fifth place this spring. Riding now in sixth, Jeff Burton looking back to Jeff Gordon in seventh, Kenny Irwin. That Haviland Texaco machine right there in the mix. Up front, up goes Mayfield, low goes Jarrett. It happens that quickly. Swaps around again at lap number 28, Ralph, who just needed that little bit of an opening. That's exactly right, Eli. And he also needed to wait a little bit for the tires of the car to come around. The very beginning of the race, Dale wasn't exactly pleased with the setup. Todd Parrott said, just hang in there, buddy. It's going to come around to you. And sure enough, it did. And look where he's at. 
it's about time you won one of these things. Six second places here in the last seven starts. That's tough to do even on purpose. It really is. Yeah. Uh, after he qualified so well, he did an interview with the media, and, and people asked him about this second place thing. He said, I would take second place if I could have it right now, but the strategy is to try to win the race, because if they win the race, they are guaranteed to lose no points, and that is their focus. the banking again. Craven, you see him left of your screen, number 50, that red car. Best run he's had so far this year. Craven's got four third place finishes as his career best. Two of them right, right here. here at Rockingham. Yep. The 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup Rookie of the Year, Ricky Craven in the number 50. Oh, and here comes Dale Earnhardt now, making his way closer to the front. He's up to 24th position. Dale is. Started back in 37. Second place. Craven got it. Wow. Making that outside groove continue to work. What a run for Ricky Craven. They brought Charlie Presley in. Charlie had been his crew chief back in the 41 team when Craven won Rookie of the Year. And John Munson had been with him when he ran so well in the Bush North Series. And Scott Maxim had been his engine man for many, many years. And they were all huddled together in the garage this morning. Ricky with a big smile on his face. And why not? He's in second spot already. A couple of thirds here at Rockingham. One in Darlington. One in Daytona. Glenn, he's climbing to the front. Yeah, Eli, and I don't think you can fully appreciate just how high he is on the racetrack to you down here in the middle of the turns like I am. He is at least, and I see Mark Martin moving up there behind him. Now he's going to try that. Several other guys have tried it and haven't been able to make it work as well as Ricky has, but he is at least a sandwich shot higher than Dale Jarrett and Jeremy Mayfield up there. He is way up the racetrack, but I tell you what, it's working and you don't turn the steering wheel as much up there. You're getting better tire wear. So wherever it'll work for you, there you see Mayfield, he too climbs the banking. Jarrett is the leader, Craven is second, and Martin is third. Mayfield and Terry Labonte, and there is the man. Point leader, race leader. Dale Jarrett by one and two tenth seconds, showing the way. And you folks are joining us here on TNN. We're back in a moment. Welcome back to The Rock, the pop secret microwave popcorn 400 led by Dale Jarrett. He's got a second and a half of an advantage. Folks, you can use your computer as an online garage pass for today's race. Just log on to TNNRacing.com. It's TNN's special website with the latest news from Rockingham. All the in-car camera views you want, that live scanner talk between the drivers and the crews. Log on now and get the latest multimedia motorsports info at TNNRacing.com. Dale Jarrett continuing to lead, but Ralph, apparently everything is not going as smoothly as they'd like, huh? No, not right now, Eli. There's a bit of a question over a vibration. They're not sure where it is coming from. He's been checking the gauges. Everything is fine. The lap times are just fine. They're talking about moving the car up maybe about a half a lane on the racetrack to see if that can change anything. They're going to maybe go up about half a lane, so let's keep an eye on that now and see if that's what he does. And look how those speeds have dropped off by virtue of A, going through some traffic, and B, the wear on those Goodyear tires. He lights, he's very still there in the corners with his hands. The car is not handling badly. It's just not able to stay right on the bottom now. And the vibration that he's feeling in the car, that, hey, changing around on the racetrack is not going to get rid of the vibration. We knew Buddy Baker wouldn't stay away. <laughs> he went out back and he uh, gargled a little bit. And, uh, went to the garage. They did a little work on the garage. Truck, that's right. all. Then you see NASCAR timing and scoring brought to you by Napa. We keep America running. They've got all the full one down going for you right there. Further back, look at some of these guys who are moving up through the field. There on the high side, the number four, Bobby Hamilton. He's come from 35th to 11th. Look at some of those guys. Rusty Wallace has moved up. Add Dale Earnhardt to that list from 37th to 21st. A lot of guys have hit the combination. A lot of guys are already praying for a pit stop. A lot of them are wishing they had four fresh tires on those cars. 
with Ted Musgrave, as you see, in 42nd position. Closer to the front, the two, Rusty Wallace, 28, Kenny Irwin. They are 6th and 7th, respectively. Wallace was really disappointed with his qualifying run, said he didn't know what was wrong with the car. They just couldn't quite figure it out. They went to work on that race car with the race setup, and they absolutely hit it. They hit it perfectly. Zero changes on that number two this morning. Uh, watch Rusty. He's won more races here than any other driver in this event. It could be his day today. And you know, we talk so much about Ricky Rudd's streak. You realize that guy, Rusty Wallace, has at least one win in the last 14 years. So that is uh, second only to Ricky Rudd's streak of 16. Here's a good second place scramble now. 50, Ricky Craven is in second. Mark Martin, the 6, wants it. The 22, the cat car of Ward Burton is right there. Yeah, Ward Burton, you know, he won his first major race right here. So he knows how to get it. Oh, did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> A little Mark, voice change. <laughs> Mark Martin about lost the rear of his Valvoline machine. Is it tougher, and buddy, I hate to make you talk extra, but is it tougher to race a guy when you are a couple of grooves higher than him on the racetrack as opposed to if you're following in his tire tracks and you see Ward Burton grab second away from Craven? Is it tough to get a perspective on the guy you're racing when you're up by the wall and he's down by the apron? Yeah, it is because you, the car on the bottom gets in the corner so much better and you're way up on the racetrack, it looks like you're losing distance. You get back in the throttle, and, and, you know, then you power right back up on him. Watch, watch Mark Martin as he comes off the corner over here. Watch that white car in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Tail end just comes right around. What a nice job he did hanging on to that. Ward Burton saw opportunity and took advantage of it up on the high side. Mark Martin, he's finishing the top ten in points for ten straight years. Consistency. Middle of the field, the four is Hamilton. He's at 11. You've got everybody else there. Andretti, the 43, main field of the 12, all battling for position. And this guy, Jeff Burton, with whom we're riding, he's now in 13th spot. Still this there, Johnny. Still outside, buddy. This reminds still you there. of the old uh, Dover races, where Don't Harry Gant and a few yeah. of the guys are way up high, and everybody else is down low, and a couple of guys were in the middle. That's a Harry Gant groove right there. Yep. Uh, very clear, top clear. of the racetrack, and, and uh, Bobby Allison used, used to run right on the bottom of the racetrack. Jeff Burton trying to figure out which of those three lines is best. Mayfield's way up top, Andretti's in the middle, and he's looking at both those lines at the bottom. Looks pretty appealing as well. Here goes Bobby Labonte riding with him now as he tries to grab 13th away. Again, what we talked about, Labonte down low, 99 up high, Jeff Burton, they're battling for position. And Glenn, Bobby had dropped back a little bit, but now he seems to be resurgent. Yeah, but Eli, I think the reason is that the cars in front of him are slowing down worse than he was. Uh, Bobby's car was tight in the middle of the corner, and he was having to turn it so far that it was breaking the back tires loose as he was coming off. So uh, we're hearing everything from everybody down here. Some of them are tight in the middle, loose off. Some are loose in and tight off. So there's a lot of uh, uh, adjustment that's going to have to be made. But Bobby's car, he just uh, has pretty much set a steady pace and is holding on to that right now. And those guys in front of him are kind of coming back to him now. Remember, we talked on the pre-race about Pontiac. They have won 10 of the last 23 races here. And Bobby Labonte would like to add yet another marker to that list. We're early if you're just joining us. 55 laps in. No cautions, no pit stops. All's been clean and green thus far. We have seen some teams already have problems to the degree where they were getting lapped. That's 10th place on your screen. Bobby Hamilton, John Andretti. Interesting matchup there. Hamilton has won. He's now driving for the Kodak team, but he had won for the STP team here a couple of years ago in October. John Andretti working the bottom side, trying to stay ahead of the guy that used to drive that same car he's in. free so far still early good scramble there 18 and 12 Mayfield and Bobby Labonte 
Kenny Schrader is headed down pit road. This is an early pit stop, unscheduled. It's too early for routine service. But Schrader, in fact, slid all the way to 40th spot and was losing a lap already. This is a great battle here. Again, 12th and 13th, swap it around, give it to Bobby Labonte now, ahead of Jeremy Mayfield. So some good racing all around, but up front it is still Dale Jarrett by one and one tenth seconds on Ward Burton. Jack Rouse, his men are right now running second and third. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you've had a chance to experience Country.com, your personal source for all things country. From race cars to country stars, connect to Country.com. That is TNN's home on the World Wide Web. Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergman, Glenn Jarrett, Steve Burns, Ralph Shaheen, the whole crew on hand. I realized it went to commercial. I said Jack Roush's guys are running first, or excuse me, second and third. Obviously, uh, Ward Burton drives for Bill Davis and uh, wanted to correct that. Didn't want to think that uh, there had been a trade <laughs> this weekend or something. Uh, Ward still very much with Bill Davis and obviously Jeff Burton and a host of others running for uh, Jack Roush. The 88 in the middle of that picture, that's Dale Jarrett starting to put laps now on some of the back markers. Picking and choosing as he goes. We've seen unscheduled stops already. David Green in the 45, about to go a lap down. There's Ward Burton driving for Bill Davis Racing. We saw Mike Bliss in for an unscheduled stop, lap number 59. Whoa, three wide coming out of the corner. That's risky stuff. That big pile of traffic allowed Ward Burton to close in on Dale Jarrett a few moments ago. But look at what's happened. As he's been in the midst of it, Rusty Wallace has closed in on him. All the way from fifth spot, Rusty Wallace now in second position. Thus found the opening and took advantage of it. Meanwhile, Ralph, what's the deal? Once you go a lap down, you might as well come in for tires. Is that why Schrader put it early? Well, Eli Kenny felt that the tires were driving like they were 10 pounds over in the update from down on the pit lane. Meanwhile, look at number six, Mark Martin. He's running in fifth. He's got Bill Elliott's machine there along with, though Bill is already a lap down in 36th position. We're seeing pit stops for Stacy Compton. David Green is in as you ride with Bill Elliott now. Boy, he's having to hold off on the, the throttle until he hits the straightaway. He can't even touch the throttle, Bill's so loose he can't get back in the throttle at all. He's good here at Rockingham, Elliot. is three wins here, 11 top fives at Rockingham. Runs this racetrack extremely well. 14th place, a good scramble. Mayfield and Spencer. Jimmy in the 23, Mayfield in the 12. Mayfield's guys, I'm sure, are disappointed that he has dropped that far back. They really thought they could hang on to the very front of this pack, but uh, it just hasn't worked out for them so far today. They are certainly anticipating their first opportunity to pit that car and make adjustments in it. Still early, though. Jeremy's used to handling a car or a vehicle that doesn't always work as well as he'd like at times. Remember, he ran go-karts when he was 13 years old, so... He's got experience in all forms of motorsports. He then worked as a fabricator. He's one of these great stories. Guy was a go-kart racer. Went to work for Earl and Chuck Sadler and was a fabricator there. Then he found himself a chance to go racing. Ricky Craven peels off the banking. He's going to come in. Kevin LePage is making a pit stop. These are at lap number 69. Darrell Walter has been fighting with uh, Jarrett there to stay in the lead lap. He's, he's running just about as fast as Jarrett is, but about to go a lap down. Darrell's at 33rd. There you see Ricky Craven. Got himself up towards second spot earlier. just wants to hope that there is not a caution flag and give the leaders an opportunity to pit under caution while he's doing his pit stop under green. This long pit road, you just can't make a pit stop for four tires without losing laps. That Suzuki ATV pit stop brought to you by Suzuki, maker of fine motorcycles and ATVs. Let's go to the pits. Well, Eli, we heard Ricky Craven call into John Monson. 
to the crew chief moments ago, and he had overdriven the race car. He overheated the right rear tire, and that's why he had started to backslide. Should also mention one of his car owners, Hal Hicks, is here this weekend and enjoying his honeymoon. He got married yesterday. And our congratulations to what better place to spend one's honeymoon than at a racetrack. You have a strange sense of a concept of marital bliss, and I, I wouldn't want to be in your house when you walk in the door tonight. <laughs> hey, on our honeymoon, uh -oh. among, uh -oh. other, uh -oh. among other things, <laughs> among other things, Claudette and I sat on the beach and listened to the MRN radio broadcast from Dover. So there. You saw Ricky Rudd making the stop. This is third spot right now on the screen. Terry Labonte in the five, grabs it away from Ward Burton in the number 22, and here comes Mark Martin as well, trying to take advantage of that inside groove. Down low, working very well. Now, I tried to talk my wife into going to the races as we were on our way to the motel, and she just looked at me and said, you better not even mention that again. <laughs> <laughs> Dale Earnhardt in for a pit stop. There he is, coming in at lap number 73. Dale had worked himself up by about 17 spots when he elects to make the stop. These are all obviously within the expected pit window. We have had no cautions if you're just tuning in. It's been clean and green. And Earnhardt returns to the fray. Well, back in February, we went to lap 208 without a yeah. yellow flag, and then we had a whole pile of them, one after another. Well, old DW gave it a heck of an effort there in the 66, but Darrell Waltrip goes a lap down out of Dale Jarrett. So Darrell Waltrip gone, and that means up to 29th spot has now already been lapped by our race leader. Dale Jarrett led lap number eight for one lap, then reassumed the lead at lap 28. We're now at lap 75. <laughs> We're back in a moment. There is your race leader, Rusty Wallace, but at lap number 81, he will make a pit stop, and that will give the lead to Terry Labonte. So Rusty will lead for a lap because Dale Jarrett is pitted, and then Terry Labonte will take over the top spot as most all of the machines now make their way down the pit lane for green flag stops at lap number 81. Here comes Kenny Irwin. He's in for service. Terry's coming down pit road. It's Kenny space. Irwin almost clobbered the wall trying to come into the pits a lap before that. Locked the brakes right up. Black skid marks right up to the wall. He didn't quite hit it, but that's as close as you can come to hitting it without hitting it. There's the skid marks right there. That's what happened to Kenny Irwin. He's headed to, he headed to the pits, couldn't quite make it, and had to abort the run. Here's his second try. Crew going to work on that Texaco Haviland machine. You saw the NASCAR official counting to make sure they were the correct number of crew members over the wall. the new crew chief this week on that race car. Ray Fox the third is his crew chief. That's his fourth crew chief in four Rockingham Winston Cup starts for Kenny Irwin. So everything is cycled back around now to Dale Jarrett. He will reassume the race lead now at lap number 83. There is Dale. Mark Martin led the first three laps. Mayfield the next three. Jarrett led lap number eight. Mayfield led from nine through 27. Then Jarrett led again from 28 through 80. Rusty Wallace led a couple of laps, and now Dale Jarrett again. Any surprises, Ralph? The 80-80 line did something really kind of interesting on their pitch stop. When they came in, they waited till the very last second. All the tires were down off the wall, and all of a sudden Todd Parrott said, pit now, pit now. And they all threw the tires up, and off they went, and jumped up, and ready, ready to go. Now, they put sticker tires on, but nothing was said about the vibration, Eli. Apparently, that story is going away for them. What? Well, we, we were in Mark Martin and Jeremy Mayfield's pitch, Ralph, and uh, they had four tire changes and some chassis adjustments. Pretty significant adjustment on Mayfield's car. His car was very loose getting in the corner and tight coming off. Just an air pressure adjustment on Mark Martin's car. He liked his car pretty much. They adjusted it ever so slightly. Steve? Hey, Glenn. Ward Burton was complaining to crew chief Tommy Baldwin about a push in the center of the turns. So they came in, put on four tires, and the only adjustment they made was they took some air pressure out of the right front tire to help that 22 car turn just a little bit better. So there you are, up to speed. Lap 86 on the board right now, and the lead is Jarrett. 
Roy Burton running in second. Mark Martin is third. Sterling Marlin up to fourth, and Rusty Wallace is fifth. Watch this before, what Dick was telling you about when Kenny Irwin was trying to come down the pit lane. Whoa, lock him up. Don't hit anything. Wow. You can have Yeah, him. he almost got it. You can hear the rear end chattering where the brakes locked up. Oh, yeah. Well, you want to come in as hot as you can. There's no speed limit not until you like get that. right. No. Not that fast, no. You want to go as quick as you can and keep the car in control until you get to the white line that marks the entrance to pit road. Even just a little bit too hot. So, pit stops. The first round have now been completed. No major storylines yet. Dale Jarrett leaves at a racetrack where his dad, Ned, drove his final race back in October of 66. Thing they keep going around in circles. <laughs> CNN Motorsports live coverage of the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 is being brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. And by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR. Hey, race fans, this Bud's for you. Welcome back, everybody. Who is the leader going to be at halfway? Well, enter the TNN Rev It Up sweepstakes. You could be a winner. Tell us who is leading at lap number 197, and you could be one of eight grand prize winners to join us at a NASCAR Winston Cup event aired right here on TNN. You'll also get a chance to meet and greet either Terry Labonte, Jeff Gordon, or Wally Donaldback. Just go to your local participating events auto parts store for an official entry form, or send your name, age, address, phone number, and the answer to who is leading it halfway, put it all on a postcard and send it to the address you see right there on the screen in Southbury, Connecticut. Or if you'd like, just enter online at country.com and hopefully you'll be able to join us out in the Valley of the Sun for the NASCAR Winston Cup race at Phoenix upcoming. Eli, I'm watching Jeff Gordon AFIX and go a lap down right now. Yeah, Jeff Gordon is backslid to 21st position right now. Another guy who has also backslid a good bit is Tony Stewart there in the 20 car. Tony is running in 22nd. Glenn, what was the deal? He, he didn't do it seemingly was a problem during the pit stop. Yeah, Eli, they took a lot of extra time because they made a lot of adjustments to the car. Uh, Tony didn't like the car. It was tied in and loose off. So they made air pressure adjustments, which obviously they did before he got here. But they also uh, went down around on the uh, left rear spring, and they also pulled a spring rubber out of the front of the car, and they had a little bit of trouble getting it out. And that's the reason that the pit stop took so long and Tony lost some extra time. Yeah, I kind of figured something it happened. Uh, unusual for that team. Look at Dale Jarrett trying to put a lap on Jeff Gordon. Yeah, and Jeff Gordon keeps pulling over in front of him down the straightaway so he can't get by. Much quicker in the corner is the 88 car, but down, watch where they come off here. You'll see that, well, he finally made the pass there. Isn't that something? You, know, you think back a year ago, what was Dale Jarrett? 620 points behind the point leader. Now he's 246 points ahead of the next man in line. That's what we call a swing uh, from one season to the next. Just look at the numbers here. Last year, average finish for Jarrett was 7. It was 11. This year, 7. What a great improvement from one season to the next for Dale. And Jeff Gordon now a lap down in 22nd position. Well, a few minutes ago, Tony Stewart was a lap down as well. He went into the pits. They did a long pit stop, adjusted the car. He blew right on by Dale Jarrett, got his lap back. All he needs is a caution now, and he's right back in it again. Same thing could happen to Gordon. Don't count Gordon out just because he's gone a lap down. We've gone 101 laps right now without a caution. We have been caution-free. A lot of teams just trying to find where their race car works the best. Johnny Benson being bypassed by the leader. We're riding now with Bobby Labonte all of a sudden back up to seventh spot. He's had one of those rubber band kind of days in the front to the back, but snapping back to the front. Yeah, he's right now very conservative in the way he goes through the corners and all, and, and uh, looks like he has a very good line. If you notice, they've been to the top of the racetrack, to the bottom of the racetrack, hunting uh, places that the car is good right now. He told me what he was going to try to do in today's race was to drive the car as straight as possible, turn it as little as possible in a method to try to conserve tires as we watch the onboard telemetry from Robert Presley's Jasper car. Somebody had to now, buddy. You're as good as he is. 
8,300. You see him on the brake pedal there getting in the corner, too. He used a lot of brake here. There goes eighth and ninth. Rudd goes high in the 10. Hamilton the four, Earnhardt the three coming through here. Steve Park in the one, running in 13th position moments ago. And he, too, is getting ready to pick up a spot. Park with a wheel in that yellow number one car on the bottom. The boss is ahead. Earnhardt owns his race car. I tell you what, the crowd here this week has been so with Dale Earnhardt. When sure. Earnhardt came out to run his qualifying lap, I don't think there was a human being in this grandstand that didn't have a fist in the air following that win last week at Talladega. <laughs> uh, this guy's popularity, you know, he's never won most popular, but somehow or another there's something wrong there because this guy right now is probably the most popular driver in Winston Cup. Speaking there of Dale Earnhardt, who right now sits in 11th, with lots of racing yet to go here at Rockingham. 105 laps on the board. Dale Jarrett is the leader. He's ready to put Joe Nimichek a lap down. It's new. It's cool. It's easy to use. It's an internet site that features over 350,000 name brand products. Children Instruction and a place for people who love their car. www.wrenchhead.com Register now. Proud sponsor of NASCAR Rocks. Wrenchhead.com Some of the folks down in the concourse area here at The Rock checking out that freshly squeezed lemonade, which goes so well with your pop secret popcorn. There's Dale Jarrett, not thinking about the concession stand, only thinking about that head table at the Waldorf come the first Friday of December, as he is just cruising right now. Glenn, apparently uh, we've seen things clear up, and Ralph, you followed up on the same story. Apparently uh, that vibration for Jarrett has gone bye-bye. Well, I went and I checked with Todd Parrott, the crew chief for Dale, and I said, Todd, I heard you talking about the vibration. Has it gone away? And he just looked at me and smiled and said, I hope so. Buddy, what could that vibration have been that it would go away? Might it have been related to those tires or something well it could have been it could have been a wheel weight off anything you know a, a small vibration like that it could be in the drive train but a lot of times it's just a set of tires uh maybe a weight off of the right front or right rear glenn what are you hearing on pit road well Eli, i didn't hear a whole lot about what it was the only thing that i do know and, and we're not supposed to show favoritism but uh my dad is here today he's probably helping spot for dale and uh you know, he has a lot of influence everywhere, and he pretty much willed that vibration away. Is that what it was? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we know the rest of the story. There is Dale Jarrett. As well as he's running, he just continues to mow down this field. Bill Elliott, you've not heard him talk about much today. There's the McDonald's machine. Steve, he is back in 42nd and already five laps down. Yeah, and I'll tell you how he lost those laps, Eli. He stopped on lap 79. They put the hood up on the McDonald's car because the throttle was sticking. And again, this isn't a good place to have that happen. The team found a small rock in the throttle shaft. So kind of appropriate here at Rockingham, but a bad break for Bill Elliott. My oh, goodness. There is Bill Elliott. You can follow your favorite drivers there on the upper left of the screen. NASCAR timing and scoring brought to you by MCI on net. That's from MCI WorldCom, your one connection to the world. Dale Jarrett up front. Closing in on the 18th place runner, Wally Dallenbach, in that red and white number 25 Bud car. You know, it looks so easy for Dale Jarrett right now, but let me take you back one year to this very same race. Last year, the week before, Dale Jarrett left Phoenix in a medevac helicopter with a gallbladder problem. Tough, tough situation. Physically so sick he could barely walk. They had to carry him out of the car. Came back here to Rockingham last year for this race. Did no worse than finish second. Unbelievable. Ken Schrader in again, lap 117, Steve. Yeah, Eli, remember, he stopped earlier than most of the other cars today. And I believe it was Ralph talking about the problem of the tires feeling overinflated. Schrader said this time the car feels a lot better. The car is just a little bit loose, but this is a normal stop for him, given the fact that they stopped earlier. Right, he had come in at lap 57, now comes in at lap 117. So Steve's indeed right on the money there. He is in his own pit window, but very much a schedule stop 
They're seeing Stacy Compton come into the pit lane, making an early stop. He had pitted only a few laps after Schrader did earlier. And look how much new tires mean. Look at them just blow by everybody now. Yeah, it looks like the other cars have spark plug wires off when they come off the corner. He just rockets down the straightaway. Here's a good scramble now. Brothers. The brothers Labonte. Labonte. Side by side. Bobby on the bottom. Terry on the top. The only set of brothers to win here at Rockingham. Bobby and Donnie Allison. Thought Terry was going to break out of his slump and win Talladega last week, but boy, got into one of those little jams and broke the oil cooler line on that thing. If somebody's got a four-leaf clover, send it to these guys. They sure need it. What a tough year they've had so far. Terry only one top ten in the last 11 races. That was that eighth place at Bristol. We all remember the finish of that event. Oh, yes. <laughs> and looking at that car just behind those two guys, that 36 car, 21 times this year they've had crashed cars that they had to repair. Just remarkable. Yeah, 20 clips they've gone through. They've had a tough ride. That, that team has had a really tough ride. Today is the 96th time that team will have started a Winston Cup race. They've got a grand total of one top five to show for it. Kenny Irwin having backslid all the way to 27th spot. There you see John Andretti. He's still in sixth. Then the lapped car of the 28th. And the 21, Elliott Sadler, also a lap down. You saw a quick glimpse of the Wood Brothers Sitco machine. There's 15th spot right there, Tony Stewart. Boy, well, he's starting to show a little bit, bit of muscle now. He's picking it up. Uh, he just got by Earnhardt on the bottom side of the racetrack. Look where he's running, trying to get the right line. Tony has run here well in the past, particularly in the NASCAR Bush Series. Could have, should have, might have won Remember that a one? Bush race back here in February of 1998. Leading going into the third turn. Wasn't leading coming out. Got a little tap in the back end from Matt Kenseth. And that spoiled his win. Well, Stewart is running incredibly well. And you know, he's got to be leaning on those tires really hard to try and do what he is doing. He, he after all, was a lap down right after that pit stop. And he's gone past Dale Jarrett. And, uh, rolling on. He's all the way up to 15 spot at this point. He's 15.6 seconds behind the leader. And again, the bottom line is uh, a zillion horsepower isn't going to help you here. No, You've no. got to handle well. That's what Robert Yates man Dale Jarrett is doing right now. Back in a moment. Jarrett continues to lead and I hope you've had a chance to follow his exploits today with NASCAR online during the race after the race your 24-hour NASCAR garage pass and by the way as a special treat Buddy Baker is going to be joining you uh, online yeah, right <laughs> supposed to be right there yeah. after the race you know you'll be able to call in your answers and it'll work out real well you'll be able to discuss the ins and outs of racing here at the rock so Buddy who has been a trooper today bothered by the cold the flu the bad voice. Oh, yeah. He'll be checking things out. And don't forget to NASCAR Thunder, the all new and official store of NASCAR. You can visit NASCAR Thunder open in cities everywhere. And for locations and more information, just call that number you see on the screen 615 883 7000. That number is operational Monday through Friday. And they'll give you what a great idea with Christmas just around the corner now. I heard my first Christmas commercial the other day. We haven't even gotten to Halloween yet, and I heard some Christmas commercials. But if you're looking for somebody's uh, special gift who's a big NASCAR fan, remember NASCAR Thunder locations. Bobby Labonte. He's one of the few still on the lead lap. He's running an eighth. Moments ago, Dale Earnhardt went a lap down in 16th. And that's what happens at a racetrack like this, or for any racetrack for that matter, if you have a guy who's really hooked up and there are no cautions, uh, a whole ton of guys are going to go a lap down. Yeah, but Jeff Gordon's in real trouble right now. He, uh, he's backing up every corner right now. He's almost three quarters of a lap behind. Again, he's already one lap down. He's fixing to go two laps down. But Ralph, as poorly as Gordon's doing, that's how well Bobby Labonte's doing. Yeah, Eli, but not all is well with him. He is pushing real bad to the center of the corner. The left side tires are uh, not helping him turn in the, in the corner right now. But he's got time to work on it. Just think about it. The last six races for Bobby Labonte, with whom we're riding, he was second in Richmond, third in New Hampshire, fifth at 
at Dover, eighth at Martinsville, second at Charlotte, seventh last week at Talladega. So his worst run has been eighth place in his last six races. And this year, you, know, you do the comparison from one year to the next. This year, he's only 246 behind uh, Dale Jarrett. Last year at this time, he was 883 points behind the point leader. So he's uh, picked up 630 some odd points from one year to the next. If you're a Brett Bodine fan, he has taken his car to the garage area. So Brett Bodine... The going up. only retiree for the moment, though the crew, as Dick says, has took, taken the car back. They're going to pop the hood and see what they might be able to do on Brett's machine. But they lost an engine here earlier this week as well in the number 11 yeah. Paychex car. Look at it, Bobby Labonte here. He's led all but four races so far this year. Four wins, four poles, second in points, just one DNF. That means only that one race he has... Failed to finish. The five is Terry Labonte. The 40 is Sterling Marlin. Looking at that battle from Bill Elliott's view, the 43 is Andretti. So the 40, the 5, the 43. Those three cars in a row all battling for position. Then the buffer car, if you will, the Bill Elliott machine. Then you've got Bobby Labonte closing in. There goes a battle for fifth. Terry Labonte in the five. His 633rd consecutive NASCAR Winston Cup start. Hasn't missed a race since the end of his rookie season back in 1979. That in its own right is beyond belief. For this day and age, with it's incredible. guys getting banged up and what have you. Yep. His 42nd consecutive start here at Rockingham. Larry Labonte running on the high side. He's got five top ten finishes in a row in this race. One here in 1983 with Dale Inman as his crew chief, and one again in 1986 with Steve Meal as his crew chief, having a good run in that yellow number five car. Terry Labonte in fifth spot right now. Riding with Bobby Labonte still. Again, if you're just joining us, no cautions. Everything has been nice and clean thus far. Routine pit stops for everybody. Only team going behind the wall thus far is Brett Bodine. Watching Sterling Marlin there in the 40. With Bobby Labonte closing in, that'll be seventh and eighth spot up for grabs. We're also getting close to the next series of pit stops. The early fellas, guys like Kevin LePage, who stopped in the front end of the pit window before, he is now presenting himself on the pit lane. Johnny Benson pitted just a couple of laps to go. At number 26, you see there on the bottom of your screen. And that man, Dale Jarrett, by four and one-tenth seconds, continues to lead here at The Rock. It's a sun-drenched crowd, a little chill in the air, but we're glad you're with us here on TNN. Welcome back, everybody. By five and a half seconds, Dale Jarrett continues to lead here at The Rock. Pit stops are taking place, but not for those guys. Rusty Wallace in the two, Mark Martin in the six. They're staying out there battling for third and fourth spot. But over the last few moments, Kenny Wallace has pitted. Jeff Burton, Michael Waltrip, Darrell Waltrip. Dale Earnhardt's been back in. Jeff Gordon has pitted. So, too, Ricky Rudd. We've seen Matt Kenseth make some stops. Glenn? And Eli Jeff Burton has come in right now. A little bit early, I think, for him. But this time, uh, four tires, fuel, and a chassis adjustment. And Kenny Irwin is coming in right behind him. In fact, they thought that uh, there might. They were, they, in fact, they were going to come in on the same lap. The crews got together. They're pitted right beside each other and worked it out to where Kenny would wait a lap. So uh, Burton's down in the way. Irwin on the way in. So all of these stops are routine. Again, we have had no cautions today. Jeffrey Bodine pits, Robert Presley pits, and all the while that man right there, Dale Jarrett of the 88, continues to be unchallenged thus far. If you are a Brett Bodine fan, his day is done. Engine failure is what sent the Paychex car behind the wall, and he is done for the afternoon. 
Bill Elliott is pitting. There's Kenny Irwin in for stop. And you see those numbers on the pit wall, the outside pit wall? Those are the numbers that Nick Berger was talking about during the pre-race to help the guys find their pit stalls, Glenn, in that circular portion of the pit lane. Yeah, it looks like uh, the graffiti you used to see when you're in college. They wrote it all over the walls when they were building stuff. But uh, it's definitely a help, as we talked about early on. Those guys need that. Kenny Irwin came in and uh, has moved on out. Uh, he, uh, the car was pretty good, but I didn't understand why he had to pit them because, you know, he had that problem a while ago. He was one of the last cars to pit, and I would have thought this would have been about 10 or 12 laps early uh, for Kenny, but uh, evidently he wanted new tires, and he's got them. He's down in the way. Uh, we're going to see other pit stops from uh, Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, and Bobby Labonte here very shortly. And again, when everybody else pits and they take on those new tires, you got to make sure uh, you don't go even farther behind. What does a race fan do if they're in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina one night? They're going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina the next night. Obviously, you stop at the racetrack in between. Lori Morgan, great to have you with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And I guess you are indeed appearing at the fair here in the Raleigh area. I right am. Huh? I am. I came from Myrtle Beach last night and kind of camped out here and slept. And uh, until the, uh, the big race began and I went down and sang the anthem so and you did it well last time we saw you I guess you the Daytona 500 a few years ago yes right why don't you look at that fellow with that funny oh. looking contraption on his shoulder there that, <laughs> that's Bubba Dean taking a quick picture how are things going with my heart your new uh, your new album the new Every, CD everything's going great we're on uh, the my heart tour right now and um, and we'll be until the end of the year and then we start the new tour beginning of next year and so everything's going really really good right now Watching Dale Jarrett and the 88 continue on his way. We're chatting with BNA recording star, one of the best in the business, Lori Morgan. Thank you. Tell me, if, if your children, if Morgan or Jesse wanted to go racing, would you let them? Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I think it's important that, uh, that you kind of back your kids up in what they want to do. And I, and I know it's, you know, it's kind of a, uh, a very scary sport for any parent or loved one that watches, but you gotta let you got to let people do what, what's in their heart. If they felt like they needed to do it, I'd be out there just rooting them on. How about their music background, though, with you coming from a, a great uh, musical family with, with your experiences at the Opry since you were a child? Uh, are they inclined in, in music? They are. Jesse is, is a great singer and drummer, and Morgan's a great singer. Morgan's gone into drama, actually. She wants to be an actress. And uh, Jesse's in sports and music, and he just doesn't know what he wants. Well, he's only 12. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Buddy Baker promises that he's not infectious, so <laughs> for that microphone you're using, you should be okay, but it's great to have you with us Thank here today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It's been Lauren fun. Morgan, one of the best in the business, country music star. She was here to sing the national anthem, and indeed, she performed at Myrtle Beach last night, and she performs, performs at the North Carolina State Fair in Raleigh this evening. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming by. There you see John Andretti. He's in sixth. What is that flapping there? Looks like a piece of molding. Let's go down to, to the Andretti pits. Ralph, what is that? Well, Eli, you know, there's braces on these windows to keep them supported in the car. And one of those braces on the rear window on the number 43 of John Andretti is flapping around loosely on the back side of the car. No word yet as to what they're going to do. And we're prepared for Dale Jarrett to come in probably on the next lap as well, the 88. Meanwhile, Mark Martin is in. Glenn? Mark comes in. He was really complaining about the tires, telling Jimmy Finney that the tires were gone. I was watching Jimmy as Mark came down pit road. Jimmy was counting off the pit stalls for him to let Mark know for certain how uh, just how close he was getting. Right side tires are on. Left sides are uh, going on right now. Slight Jesse adjustment air pressure wise. Just a little bit, about 18.2 seconds. Mark is down and away. We didn't hear. No, we did not hear him talk anymore about the brake problem that they had. Let's go to Steve. Hey, thanks, Glenn. Ward Burton is in. Say how good this car is. They don't make any changes to the 22. Just four tires of gas, Ralph Shaheen. Well, the 88 is in. Dale Jarrett, the NASCAR Winston Cup points leader, makes his pit stop, the second one of the day for this crew. Right side tires are just about done. They come around to the left side. They will put sticker tires on. No more word about that vibration. He's been nice and calm about that. The only thing Todd Parrott, crew chief, has been talking to him about is reminding him 
to be nice and smooth. A nice 17.3 second stop, and Dale Jarrett is back underway. That was the quality care pitch stop that you saw, very much like the quality care service you get at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers. Maybe not quite as quick as that. Meanwhile, the race leader, Bobby Labonte, comes onto the pit lane for service back downstairs. Yeah, Eli, and uh, as normal, Bobby Labonte's car got a little better fuel mileage. I don't know that the uh, the tire wear was any better, but uh, he is pulled in now. They made some big adjustments on the car last time. Really seemed to help it out, and they are adjusting the car again. Uh, looked like a track bar adjustment that time. So they're still working on the handle of that car. The problem with doing that under green flag is that you don't get to do as much as what you would like. Uh, the car is down and away in 16.5 seconds. Wow. A good stop under the gun, particularly when they made a chassis adjustment also. Now, Dale Jarrett reassumes the lead, and that is again a battle for position. Fifth spot right there between the six of Martin, the two of Rusty Wallace. Martin will take fourth. Wallace is now back to fifth. So that's how that settles it. Let's set it for you. Jarrett the leader, Ward Burton second, Jeff Burton third, Mark Martin is fourth, Rusty Wallace is fifth, Terry Labonte comes out now sixth, and Dreddy is seventh, Dale Earnhardt is eighth, Sterling Marlin is ninth, and Bobby Labonte will cycle around in tenth. Others on the lead lap include Steve Park in 11th, Wally Dabbenbach 12th, Jeremy Mayfield 13th, 14th spot belongs to Ricky Rudd. Back to Rockingham after these messages. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 is being brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by UAW GM, assembly line to finish line, teamwork wins. Eli Gold, Buddy Baker, Dick Bergren, Glenn Jarrett, Ralph Shaheen, Steve Burns, and Dale Jarrett who has just had things all his way today as the leader here at The Rock. Also had a pretty darn good pit stop there, 17-3. If you're curious, remember I gave you the rundown before and told you that Dale Earnhardt was in the top 10. Remember that he pitted back at lap 147, pitted early along with some other teams, and they made up a good bit of distance. That's how he got back on the lead lap, if you're curious. Remember we had talked so much about him losing a lap earlier. That's how he picked up all of that uh, track position. The uh, big loser in that sequence, I guess, will be uh, Tony Stewart. He was 10th in the lead lap before the pit stop, and he is now 16th one lap down. So uh, Tony Stewart uh, turns out to be the uh, big loser in the on-track uh, situation there by virtue of that pit stop wrapped up moments ago. There's Ward Burton. He's running in second. He is six-tenths of a second behind the race leader. 123 races since he last won. His last win was in October 95 here. Always run well at Rockingham. Qualified third in that same race that he won. He won. First career Bush Series race was here as well. There you see 20, Tony Stewart. He's a lap down in 15th right now. Also on the racetrack, that is the 30 being driven here this weekend by Mike Bliss. Mike Bliss right now finds himself in 37th spot, three laps down. The 55, that's Kenny Wallace in the 25, Dallenbach. Dallenbach is a lap down in 15th position. Ricky Rudd trying to pick his way through traffic, a lap, actually two laps down now in 17th spot. The 50 is Ricky Craven. He's in 18th position, a lap down. The 97, that's Chad Little. Haven't talked much about him today, but Chad is in 19th spot, a lap down. That number nine, that's Stacy Compton. And the 31 is Mike Skinner. Skinner is 20th, a lap down. Compton just pitted moments ago. He is nine laps back in 42nd. 99, that's Jeff Burton. He is your third place runner. He is six and seven ten seconds behind Dale Jarrett. Again, Compton, and then the two car of Rusty Wallace. Rusty is fourth, so he and the 99 battling for position seven seconds behind the leader. Rusty is on the lead lap. There's Mark Martin. He's fifth on the racetrack. He's nine seconds back. And there's Joe Nimichek. 
Joe, not on the lead lap right now, went a lap down earlier. He's in 36, now three laps behind our leader, Jarrett. 36 machine, Jerry Nadeau. He went down a lap early, runs himself now in 32nd spot, and here comes the lead battle. Ward Burton makes the move, and Ward takes over the top spot. He'll grab it at lap number 178. Boy, oh boy, and he did that right easy. He just went right on the bottom of the racetrack, right on the white line, and just blew by a jerk. So Ward Burton, who turns 38 years of age, tomorrow, the most improved driver statistically of this season. And as we said before, he's the only driver in the top 10, not a member of a multi-car team. Back in a moment. We are back under the first caution flag of the day here at the North Carolina Speedway. Teams have made pit stops after Rick Mast had a problem on the racetrack. The crew doesn't know if the car necessarily lost an engine, but they are giving it a good look-see there on that Rick Mast entry. You see the team Woody Woodpecker car behind the wall. If he is done for the day, it will be the second retiree of the afternoon to go along with Brett Bodine. Twelve teams are on the lead lap. They've already made their pit stops on lap 180. Now we're at lap 181 with all of the teams who are at least a lap down. This is what happened a lap ago. The leader, Ward Burton, Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace. Very much routine. But again, only 12 machines on the lead lap at this stage of the afternoon. You know, Rick Mast has lost an engine. It's going to be an incredible record. He will have lost five engines in a row in this race since having his best ever career Winston Cup finish here in 1994 when he finished second. Ralph, give us a quick rundown. Well, the 88, Eli, came in. They made no changes. They took four tires. Another solid pit stop, a 17.2. The stop just before was a 17.3, so that was pretty strong as well. Now, the 22 of Ward Burton came in. They left the air pressure the same as on the previous stop. They had made a slight air pressure adjustment. Ward liked it. They clicked off a 17.8 second stop. So whatever air pressure adjustment they're at currently is what he really likes, Glenn. Yeah, and uh, we talked about the pit stop Rusty Wallace made, and boy, was it a good one. He got out ahead of everybody. Four tires and uh, uh, no changes on the car. Four tires of fuel. And all the way down at the end of pit road, Mark Martin came back in uh, uh, and took on four fresh tires of fuel as well. No changes down here either. In fact, I didn't see anybody at this end make a change on their car other than tires and fuel. So that's what's happening on the pit lane. Rusty Wallace has led the most laps here at Rockingham of any active driver. He's in front again, but the King says, my guy can get there. We're back in a moment. GNN Motorsports back live with you here at The Rock. You see Tony Stewart got a great jump to bypass the race leader, Rusty Wallace. In fact, it was such a good jump, NASCAR's put the black flag out. They're going to have to bring him back in for a stop-and-go penalty as Tony Stewart jumped the race start. Rusty Wallace continues as the race leader, number two. Then you've got the 22 of Ward Burton, the 88 of Jarrett. So Stewart already in the pits now to take his punishment, the penalty for having jumped that start. There is Tony Stewart, Nick Glenn Jarrett. This is going to be one of the longest rides in the world for a driver. We already talked about uh, how long it takes to get down pit road. Now, you guys have said he was in, and he's just now coming into my sight. Pulls into the pits, and it's just a simple watch him go. He's gone again. But uh, I tell you, that is costly. Here come the leaders by him. So he loses more than a lap, probably about a lap and a half, until he gets back up to speed. That is tough to take. So the stop and go penalty at lap number 188. That's the battle for third spot. Dale Jarrett, who has led much of the day, and Jeff Burton, who has not yet led this afternoon. Hey, Lyle, there's a lot of clouds around the racetrack right now, too. You see the racetrack itself, it's in black. This is probably not as changeable of a track as Charlotte is, but any racetrack with older asphalt will be affected by the by the uh, temperature. Absolutely, and right now, uh, cars that were having problems when the sun was out may be just right right now. Remember, the point lead was 246 coming in. 
It's grown a bit as Burton makes the move around Dale Charrett. Jeff Burton having a really nice run this afternoon in that number 99 car. Fifth year last fall. In fact, he's been fifth three times over the last four fall starts here at Rockingham. Problems for Jeffrey Bodine in the number 60 as he gets the power team Chevrolet woed down. And look at the damage to the right rear. Right rear, right rear corner of that car is just really wiped out there. Yep. So lap 191 looks as though Tony Stewart and Bodine had gotten together. And that's where that right rear Goodyear got shredded in the process. So an unscheduled stop. Remember, Jeffrey was eighth here in the spring. Watch it again. Yep, he did. I thought Tony got a little piece of him. Yeah, but uh, the sixth year, Bodine had already started checking up, getting in the corner. The tire was going flat down the back straightaway. I think he got in the wall on the back straightaway. The right side of the car is kind of mashed in. Yeah, they were all over him before that happened. Meanwhile, while they check over the power team machine, remember Rick Mast went behind the wall earlier, and if he does not come back, this would be the first race that he would fail to finish all season long. Let's get an update. And Eli, we're down here with Rick Mast. He is still in the race car. They are working feverishly. He did not lose a motor. He lost an oil line. So they're working hard to get the oil line replaced. They just changed four tires. So they're hoping to keep that streak of DNF, of not having a DNF alive. So the crew going to work on Rick Mast's machine. Meanwhile, Rusty Wallace has Ward Burton closing in from the rear flank. We talked so much about Pontiac and how they have been 10 times a winner here in the last 23 races. Why is it, Buddy Baker, that at some racetracks a certain manufacturer's car just seems to fit in? Eli, what they're doing right now, handling, handling, handling. They have good downforce, sometimes too much to be real contenders at different racetracks. But on a handling racetrack, the Pontiac is a great car. Well, you really need downforce here at Rockingham. Watching Mayfield in the number 12 machine. He's running in 10. They'll be halfway next time by. If you're going to enter that TNN sweepstakes and you need to jot down the name of the competitor leading at halfway, we'll let you know in just one more lap's time, though it looks as though it's going to be Rusty Wallace. Number two says our version of Vincent Van Gogh. The TNN rev it up sweepstakes. John Andretti has been in the picture all day long in that number 43 STP Pontiac, having a great run this afternoon. Right now he's in 11th spot. Again, Joe Nimichek in the 42, not on the lead lap. He's in 34th, four laps down, and finally gets way. Hey, Eli, that Steve, Steve Park has run very, very well in this one car all day long. This car right there. Got it. You've got yourself basically a dozen teams on the lead lap. That's all. And Park is one of those. Rick Mast is coming back out of the garage. He'll find himself 21 laps down. Now sixth place, the brothers are battling. Bobby Labonte in the 18, Terry Labonte in the five. That is sixth place. You're on, on the gas, off the gas. Not being able to apply the power all at one time. Puts a lot of pressure on the driver. Really have to pay attention here. They do use the brakes going in the corner. A lot of throttle control in the turns themselves. A lot of precision on that gas pedal to make sure they don't burn the tires off but still get the maximum possible amount of speed out of the car. Of course, you know, we don't talk that much today about Terry Labonte, but he is one of those Rockingham masters because he's finished eighth or better in seven of the last eight races here. So some guys have just managed to master the racetrack. Terry Labonte is one of those. But the number two is the man everybody's watching right now. Rusty Wallace took the lead at lap 182. We are now 20 laps further down the road, and he continues to lead here at the Rock. CNN Motorsports back with you here at the Rock. The pop secret 
microwave popcorn 400 just past the halfway point. You're riding with the man who is now in third, Jeff Burton, looking at his brother Ward just ahead of him in the number 22 machine. Deja vu of Las Vegas, where the brothers Burton battled to the bitter end. Ward's car is starting to move around a lot, like the back end of the car is not getting a good grip, but getting in the corner. 208 laps on the board. You talked about Ward turning 38 tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, his crew chief, Tommy Baldwin, turns 33 on Wednesday. I reminded him of that in the garage area. He looked at his watch and said he hadn't even made out his birthday list. Mm -hmm. I guess turning 33, you're pretty old. You know, you try to forget him at that point. Would you shut up? <laughs> no, would you be fun? Actually, birthdays are good. As long as they keep coming, Yes, yeah. you're doing well. At this point, you're right. This is a good battle it between is. the brothers, Burton. Second place, half a second behind Rusty Wallace, the leader. And look at the different lines again. Yeah. Ward's just hanging on right now. I think Jeff is a lot quicker, but he just can't make the move on the inside. Those of you who have been with us in the beginning, you know this storyline, but for those of you folks who might now just be tuning in, we have seen guys use every inch of this racetrack today. Some on the apron, some up against the wall, some in the middle groove. Whatever works for you has been the way to get it done here today. A lot of winners at Rockingham over the years that are in the field here today. Of course, you want to add to that list. 11 wins for Richard Petty and seven wins for Cale Yarborough and five for David Pearson and four for Bobby Allison. I and mean, there have been some great winners here over the years, but uh, this field is chock full of guys who have uh, chiseled a piece of the rock for themselves. Eli, the sun, the sun is uh, <laughs> gone, gone behind the, uh, it's back on the racetrack and you see Dale Jarrett coming back to the front again. Again, for those of you just tuning in, uh, that oh, is yes. Buddy Baker. No, it's a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy's been fighting a cold and stuff over the last uh, few days, and uh, we're glad he's able to work with us today and not feeling all that spiffy. There goes that second place. Finally, Jeff got a good running start on his brother and just out dove Ward into the corner. Yeah, and that blue thing right there is coming like a train right now. It's a good battle. Ralph looks like Dale Jarrett's back to second now. He's on his way, and Todd Parrott is on his way down the ladder to talk to me about it. Todd is, of course, a crew chief. Hey, Buddy Baker made an astute observation that when the clouds cover the sun, Dale seems to drop back. When he comes back out, he comes right to the front. Is that how your car is set up? Yeah, I think our car is set up more for a long run situation. And uh, Starley in the race just halfway, and... You know, no sense in getting too racy just yet. You know, we've led some laps, and that's the things we need to do. And um, we'll just keep tweaking on it a little bit. I'm sure this racetrack is going to change throughout the day, so we just got to keep working on it. You said it's too early to get too racy. At what point in this race will you really start to push hard? Probably uh, after our last pit stop, you'll see us get, get more aggressive with it. Okay, Eli, there you have it. Thoughts from Todd Parrott. Dale Jarrett now has led 149 laps today. We've run 215. And there again is the magic number, regardless of what Bobby Levante does. Well, this is the way to win a championship. Run it up front week after week after week. DJ last week, second at Talladega. Here he is this week, well on his way to leading the most laps. Here but there is Rusty Wallace with 49 career NASCAR Winston Cup wins. Looking for that number 50. He'd love to grab it today here in Rockingham. CNN Motorsports live coverage of the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 is being brought to you by the Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR, and by Midas. Go safely. Go Midas. About that for the battle for the lead here at Rockingham. Rusty's got it. Jeff Burton wants it. Couldn't make it go. He drew even. You saw him there going into the corner. Thought he had the jump. Spotter just told Rusty, pick a lower line. Try downstairs. See if you can hold him off that way. This has not been a vintage year for Rusty. Disappointing, except for his Bristol win. Every other stat this year, regretfully, is down from a year ago. 
six top fives this year. He had 13 a year ago. Points position is eighth now, fourth a year ago. Oh, and watch this, folks. Moments ago, you want to be the meat in the sandwich? Watch what happened a few seconds ago when Kyle Petty found himself coming off the corner with company all around him. Watch this. Watch Kyle Petty right here at that car. Right in the middle here. Ricky Rudd oh. on the bottom. Joe Nemechek on top. He got a piece of both of them as they squeezed and there was no room left. Hey, not bad. Two camera angles on the same deal, huh? And Elliot Sadler right behind getting on those binders in a hurry to slow down as you see Ricky Rudd. Now remember, Ricky is already a lap down in 22nd, and yes, time is running out. But remember, he's got Phoenix where he's done well, as you see Burton now make the move around Rusty Wallace and grab the lead. And Jarrett right there moving in on both of them. So the new leader has Rusty leads from 182 to 225 is now Jeff Burton. They just pull right back over and let Rusty go yep. back by. Thanks for the five points. Got his five-point lead and Rusty, or his five-point bonus, and Rusty reassumes the top spot at lap 227, but now he's got Dale Jarrett behind him. Yeah, and he's already got his five-point bonus. Remember, though, Rusty won both races here in 93. He won the February race in 94. Five wins in total here. that 50th win so bad yeah. Rusty Wallace does he he started talking about that in the middle of last year he wanted to get the 50th win for NASCAR's 50th anniversary celebration got just one last year got one this year as well at Bristol he bad wants to win another one and you know he really deserves it because no team puts more into their racing than Rusty does in his group they really go at this race car it's a it's a serious serious adventure for them they use streaker the name of the car here in February but they're using the car now now that they debuted at Charlotte a few weeks ago, which is called PC-10. They just don't name their cars so they can get it to victory lane. They probably would have used Streaker if they could have used Streaker, but Streaker got demolished at Pocono. That was the end of that deal. Napa bringing you the NASCAR timing and scoring rundown on the upper left of your screen so you'll know how everybody is running and exactly where your favorite is. Terry Labonte back from 6th to 12th in the span of the last 30 laps or so. Steve, what's cooking there? Well, he said his car has gotten bad loose, the Chevy of Terry Labonte. You know, you've heard Glenn and Ralph and myself talk about teams experimenting with dropping air pressure, and Terry says he doesn't like the way this set of tires feels. So again, he's just gotten bad loose in the five car. And again, here's a guy who has led 100 or more laps here six times in his career. He led as many as 198 one time here back in 1996. So again, he has the feel for Rockingham. He also, I guess, knows when the feel isn't quite right. 41, you see Derek Cope in the Kodiak machine. He's in 30th, three laps behind the race leader, Rusty Wallace. You got to think, too, that Ricky Rudd with Phoenix flat and slick as it gets in the desert, Homestead basically flat and slick as it gets in deep south Florida. Ricky Rudd's still got a couple of really significant shots to keep that streak going. Yeah, and he's done so well on the miles as well. And, and, you know, Phoenix is a mile. This place is a mile. Of his 20 career wins to today, eight have been on tracks that have been a mile in length, five on road courses. Tracks like this, tracks like Phoenix coming up, those are Ricky Rudd's very best. You saw Sterling Marlin in the number 40 running in the eighth spot. Dale Earnhardt in the three. There's Sterling again. And Bobby Hamilton. You know, Hamilton and Mayfield. A couple of guys who won last year who haven't yet won this year. And they're both in the lead lap now. We're at lap 234. Chad Little making a pit stop. While Rusty Wallace leads. And you get a look at the main grandstand here at the North Carolina Speedway in Rockingham. 
basic question. Are you a hardcore motorsports fan? Well, if you are, then you'll want to enter the TNN Motorsports Hardcore Heat Sweepstakes. You could be one of 50 first prize winners of a Sega Dreamcast TNN Motorsports Hardcore Heat Game or the grand prize winner of a Sega Dreamcast Game Console and a TNN Motorsports Hardcore Heat Game. All you have to do is enter via the Internet by following the official online entry form instructions available at country.com or send your name, age, your complete address and phone number with area code and a 557 postcard to the address you see there on the screen, TNN Motorsports, TNN Station, Post Office Box 3582, Southbury, Connecticut, 06488. All entries must be received by midnight Eastern Time, November 21st, 1999. Big wiggle by Rusty Wallace there coming through the turn. Didn't come close to losing it, but the back end of that car is not nearly as glued down to the racetrack as it might have been. And you know, as the laps begin to wind down here, these guys are certainly going to be thinking about this same race back in 1998. Mm -hmm. Last year, they were in the lead with 10 laps to go. Rusty stayed on the bottom. His tires went away. He stayed down, wound up third. Or in 96, when they tried a two-tire stop in this race in contention to win, it backfired. He finished in eighth spot. But he's not on the bottom today. No, he's no. not. He's all over this racetrack today, and he's doing a great job of picking the line that that car is happiest at. Moments ago, Terry Labonte went a lap down. He was the 12th place runner. So now only 11 remain on the lead lap. Steve Park is the last man on the lead lap in the number one car. He's ten and a half seconds behind the leader, Rusty Wallace. Let's see what happens here in traffic. Nimicek, the 42. He's 34th, four laps down. There's DJ on the bottom. Trying to follow front row Joe if he can. 23, Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy's in 22nd, two laps down. Oh, three wide. Good thing he didn't see that replay of Kyle yeah. Petty. <laughs> a lot of give and take there. Yeah. A lot of take by Rusty, a lot of give by the two cars he was passing. You got it. And you're not going to win this race at lap 245. Uh -oh. You're going to be around at lap 393. You know, when a guy gets dialed in, though, today, if you happen to hit it, like a Jarrett, like a Rusty now, if you get on your game, you're tough to handle, though. You don't just, you don't stay there all day, it seems. Well, Jarrett's been darn close all day. Pit stops, Kyle Petty is in. He'll come in at lap 246, if you're a Kyle fan. Scheduled stop for him. He was last in at lap 153. 14th spot. Oh, the Childress cars are side by side. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt, the three. Mike Skinner, the 31. Here comes the 28th, Kenny Irwin. That's all for position. 14th, 15th, and 16th as you ride with Kenny Irwin. Skinner has come from so deep in the field. Started in 38th spot in that number 31 car. Robert Presley in 32nd. Four laps down. And for the lead. Can Jarrett go? Yep, Rusty goes up the banking. That's all it took. Dale Jarrett takes over the lead, lap 249, when he comes back to the strike. One little, I don't even want to say bobble. That's one little move. And the guy's going to jump on it. Well, the tires are getting tired, too, now, Eli. Yeah. And, and that's got to have something to do with it, because the behavior of these race cars will change a good bit as the tires begin to go away. Lots of little granite and marble chunks in this racetrack, and they, they literally just chew away at the surface of the tire. I mean, Goodyear's got a terrific tire here, but if you ever went out on this racetrack and got on your hands and knees and looked at it, you'd wonder how any tire could possibly survive at these incredible speeds. They're running right now around 138, 139 miles an hour, and going through the corners, you, you just it's like sandpaper working on them. And you know, Glenn, you got to be impressed. Your brother showed some patience there. He wasn't going to force the issue. He was going to wait for something to happen. No, you're exactly right, Eli. And he can see what was happening to Rusty's car. The further into the tire run or the fuel run that they go, the tighter Rusty's car became. It was burning that fuel load off the back end, and so therefore it changed the handling on the car, just like you were talking about, Dick. And that's what he was waiting on. And finally, Rusty's car pushed way up the racetrack, and Dale was able to go under him. Uh, we should be seeing pit stops in the next 10 to 15 laps or so, so they'll get a chance to, to uh, fill them up, put fresh rubber on it, and start all over again. What do you got, Steve? Well, Glenn, Rusty 
Wallace's problem is he's gotten just a little bit tight in the center of the corners. When they make their next stop to land, they're going to put a half a pound of air back in the right rear tire. So again, another one of the teams experimenting or adjusting the car rather with air pressure. And you saw Rusty's car kind of skate off the corner a short while ago. Johnny Benson is pitting. Matt Kenseth is in. Michael Waltrip makes a pit stop. So does Ken Schrader. But everybody now leads their crews to do the next bit of work. Pit stop time is upon us as the TNN crew bring you the pictures from The Rock. There is Dale Jarrett, continues to lead by a second over Rusty Wallace, by two seconds over Ward Burton, and by five seconds over Jeff Burton. We're in the thick of pit stops right now. Rusty Wallace has just had a conversation with his crew. He says the left front tire on that car, he's now in second spot. Rusty Wallace says the left front tire on that car is going away bad. He says there's a good chance I'm going to have to short pit it, meaning that number two car in second spot may have to pit well before they'd like to, well before the leader because of tire problems. And again, once the other guys come in for tires, and they really just uh, take off on you. You can start losing a lot of additional uh, distance on the racetrack. We watch Rusty. Robert Presley is in. Elliot Sadler pits. Jerry Nadeau comes in for service. We're at lap 259. And if you're just tuning in, only one caution. Rick Mast lost an oil line. Lap 179 made repairs came back 21 laps later brett bodine with engine failure the only retiree he's gone to the garage that has been it only the one caution and the one retiree he's got a little, a little bit of damage on the left front corner of that two car also if not as aerodynamic as it ought to be you see a little dent right there on the left front corner i'm not sure how much damage that's done but it, it couldn't help He's been in a good bit of traffic for much of the day, run up front much of the day, running a very aggressive race and obviously connected with someone. Lap 261, if you're a Robert Presley fan, he'll be coming back in. He was a bit too quick leaving the pit lane and he's coming in for a stop and go penalty. Steve Park is in. You saw Dale Jarrett peel off. Here comes Rusty Wallace right behind him. It'll make Jeff Burton the race leader as Ward Burton will pit as well. So Jeff Burton now leads. Here comes Bobby Lapani. Let's go back to the pits. Dale Jarrett comes in in the 88. He has been talking about the car being just a little bit tight. They were talking about whether or not they would make a wedge adjustment or an air pressure adjustment. No working on the wedge, so apparently they're going to go with the air pressure adjustment on the 88, Steve. Well, Rusty Wallace just made his stop, and they also made a chassis adjustment to the right rear of that car, Ralph. They talked about air pressure, but they also made a chassis adjustment. Let's go to Glenn Jarrett. And we're down here. The uh, they're waiting on the 99. Bobby Labonte is in right now. Jeff Burton was supposed to pit last lap, and he came by. He went by pit road. He didn't get slowed down in time. Bobby Labonte took uh, four tires of fuel and made a chassis adjustment to the right rear. Now Burton finally gets in here. Uh, he burned. The, he said he wore the right front out pretty uh, pretty bad on the car. The car was real good early on in that run, but now they're going to try to uh, uh, tighten the car up just a little bit. Got just a little bit loose at the end of that run, and he is down in the way. Wow, 15.5. What a great pit stop. They just keep getting quicker and quicker every week. So all the stops now cycling back on around. Boy, once Dale Jarrett decided he was going to pit, everybody decided they were going to follow him. Rusty Wallace had been anxious to pit. The instant Dale Jarrett headed down pit road, Rusty followed, and so did just about everybody else who was on the lead lap. So Rusty is the race leader again at lap 264. Handed over the lead to Jarrett and then Jeff Burton, but now reassumes it. And Ward Burton is second. Let's set it for you. Dale Jarrett is third. Jeff Burton fourth. And Bobby Labonte fifth. Sterling Marlin is up to six now. John Andretti seventh. Mark Martin came off pit road in eighth. Ahead of Jeremy Mayfield, Bobby Hamilton, and Steve Park. That's the position they're in on the racetrack. Those 11 drivers are still 
the only ones on the lead lap out of the 43 starters. Now take a look, two seconds from the two of Rusty Wallace back to the 22 of Ward Burton. That is first to second place, 2.09 seconds. Ward Burton, one win, four top tens here in 10 Winston Cup starts. Remember, he finished last year in February of a year ago, a couple of years ago now, had that early accident, lap number 95. So he, like a lot of fellas, have had ups and downs here. Dale Jarrett, three and six tenth seconds behind Rusty Wallace. Now for the time being, as we look on the racetrack, for the time being, Terry Labonte has unlapped himself. So 12 cars now on the lead lap. If you're a Terry Labonte fan, he is ahead of the number two. Meanwhile, Glenn, Mark Martin comes out in eighth spot. What's the deal there? Well, they, they lost a little time on their pit stop, Eli. I, I, I watched it at the very end of it. I didn't think it was that bad, but now Mark, he was getting ready to come back down pit road. He thought that the right front was going down, but uh, Jimmy Phoenix told him to be patient, let the air pressure build back up in it, and it should get a little better. I've been watching him race uh, Jeremy Mayfield. He's been able to stay ahead of him, and he's actually pulling away, so uh, they did make some chassis adjustments in the car, and it got very loose and evidently it was just a different feel than Mark had been used to all day and it took him a little while to get used to it so uh, a moment of panic there the guys were up on the wall with right side tires but uh, now they've settled down looks like things are back to normal so that's the latest from down on the pit lane if you look at Mark Martin he and Ward Burton the only drivers to record their very first career Winston Cup wins here at Rockingham. Talking to Ward today, he says he attacks Rockingham. That's the way he drives the place. And he learned from Mark Martin. He learned from Steve Meal. Pulls a bit of a lower gear than some of the other fellas does. What does that do to a race car, buddy, when you pull a lower gear as Ward likes to do? Well, it just means it does not turn as many RPMs when it's low gear or should I back up? buddy's mic now has uh, gone bye-bye so we'll get back to uh, buddy on top of uh, <laughs> on top of that we'll hear from him in just a moment or so you heard the clunk and then the microphone went by so uh, we'll get back and talk about lower gearing for you in just a minute the leader is rusty wallace there you see him you see the five we told you terry labonte had gotten back on the tail end of the lead lap fans are looking on back to the rock in a moment a couple of good friends of racing, Kix Brooks and the Reverend Ronnie Dunn, as they like to call him, uh, come to the races all the time. They've got those Legends cars they run over at the Nashville Speedway USA. Uh, good to see Kix Brooks, Ronnie Dunn, and the music available to you. Okay, we talked about low and high gear. Yes, we were talking about the Ward Burton pulling a, a different gear yeah. than many of the other fellows here at the Rock. Well, if you have a low gear, that means it turns up power RPMs down the straightaway. That means you can ease out the a corner and then accelerate really quick down the straightaway. It saves tires too because you don't run as hard in the corner. Rusty Wallace has that margin now on Ward Burton. Remember it was two seconds a while ago, folks? Now it's only that margin there, half a second maybe. He's, 10, 12 car lengths. He's been just having a tough, tough time trying to get past the 20 car of Tony Stewart. This has been going on lap after lap after lap. Rusty just can't seem to get him. Might have used up his tires. I now. wonder. Well, Rusty almost crashed just a little while ago trying to go by the 20 of Tony Stewart off the ba uh, back straightaway over there. Tony come right up in front of him and they almost hit the wall together. Well, let's let Ward Burton close right in on Ward Burton just right on his back bumper. And look at those numbers right there. Ward's the quickest. NASCAR timing and scoring, upper left of your screen, brought to you by MCI on net. It is your one connection to the world. And Steve Park fixing to go a lap down. He fought a, a real hard battle today to stay with the leaders. He the has. Pennzoil number one, he's running in 11. This isn't over yet. Not by a long shot. Rusty's not got him yet.
There you see fellas who had first wins here. We talked about it most recently in the last couple of decades. Mark Martin and Ward Burton. You saw Donnie as well going back to the 60s. And there goes Steve Park. Gave it a great fight. The 11th place man now a lap down. It's only 10 remain on the lead lap. Ward Burton has just run a terrific race today. He's been second twice so far this year, both times to his brother. Vegas and Darlington have been second. Wouldn't he love to pop off a win today for his car owner, Bill Davis, and himself? Here he goes. Here he comes. That's going to be tough on the bottom. Watch the, watch the two car when he starts down off the corner here. He'll pull right away. Ward did lead a lap earlier. He led lap 178 and picked up his five bonus points. This is what we always talk about. We folks always say, well, yeah, it's, it's one thing to catch him, one thing to pass him. This is everything right here in, in capsule form around Kevin LePage, the number 16. And this is one of the really fun things about Rocky Kim. I mean, this is a racetrack where if a guy's got a good race car and he's smart, and he's got a good crew chief and a good spotter, and he can put all that together, he can pass a lot of race cars. Witness all the people that started deep in the field earlier today that got themselves up toward the front. Watch what's going on here with Ward Burton and Rusty Wallace. It's a real team racetrack. Everybody pulling together to make it happen. Well, I got to tell you, Mark Martin's less than a straightaway of going a lap down right now. These guys are mowing down some great race cars. Still plenty of racing, though. You see 107 laps to go. Only one caution today. Rick Mast lost an oil line at lap 179, returned 21 laps later. And Brett Bodine is the only guy in the garage. Engine failure put the paychecks machine out for the day. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 is being brought to you by Pontiac, who invites you to visit TNNRacing.com to register for an online chat with Tony Stewart. Welcome back to The Rock, the North Carolina Speedway. It opened in the fall of 1965, became the fifth super speedway to get a permanent spot on the NASCAR Winston Cup schedule. And Rusty Wallace is happy it did because as you look from Ted Musgrave forward towards Rusty Wallace, you see Rusty is the man who now has his moment of the spotlight. He's gotten the car dialed in. And you know, when Rusty is good this year, think about it. He's had 11 races, including today. Of the previous 10 races, five times, he has led the most laps. So when he gets good, he gets real good. Oh, and, yeah. And he's real good today. But what he needs to do is close, and that's what they're working on for sure. Well, he's got a good car today. He's able to go up high, down low, anywhere he wants to go. Inside of 100 laps remaining. You know, I was talking about Mark Martin. He's just two cars right now. Looking back, you can see Rusty Wallace right behind the 20 car there, moving in on Mark Martin to put him a lap down. Mark running in 10. Rusty has been dogging that number 20 of Tony Stewart for much of this tire run. He just hasn't been able to get by him until this moment. And Tony Stewart is already a couple of laps down in 18th position. Look at this. He's going to lap Mark Martin on the outside. Rocking, at, on the outside of Rockingham? Unheard of. Mark Martin, who won yesterday in the Bush Series race. It was his 10th career Bush Series win here at Rockingham. Going down a lap. So, 10th place now, a lap down. Only nine on the lead lap. And the man in ninth right now is Jeremy Mayfield. You can see Mark get absolutely no traction when he gets up to come off the corners. His car is off just a little bit. Hey, Ralph, we're getting a report that somebody got banged up down in Schrader's pit when he came in for a stop a while ago. What's the deal there? Oh, that's rear tire changer Jason Enders. Uh, Jason slipped on some fuel, Eli, as he came running around the back side of the car. Some fuel had spilled onto the ground, and he slipped on the surface, went down and banged up a finger pretty good. So car owner Andy Petrie, who used to go over the wall when he was just a crew chief and a crew member, will go back to changing tires. He's going to take care of the front tires, and Alan Whitaker is going to move back to the rear. 
safe down there on the uh, pit lane. Next year, Andy Petrie is going to go back to being a crew chief yeah. as well. Uh, Sammy Johns, who has been the crew chief in the number 33 all year, is going elsewhere, and Petrie's going to take the job back over himself. There you see Ken Schrader in the 33 machine. Meanwhile, up front, the two, Rusty Wallace around Matt Kenseth in the 17, and still being hounded by Tony Stewart. Jeremy Mayfield. Oh, problems in the wall. Ricky there you see Ricky Craven. Ricky Craven, as caution is on the speedway. Second time today, lap number 300. So Ricky Craven tags the wall in turn two. He had such a good run going earlier this day. Ricky Craven in the Midwest trucking entry. Just can't seem to get a break. Now, Glenn, what does this mean fuel-wise for the folks who are just joining us? We've got at this point 80, let's see now, 87 laps to go, roughly. Uh, can the guys go that distance? Uh, I think so, Eli. They've been running about 80, 82 laps, uh, most, of, most of the league cars have. And uh, the reason they've been pitting at that time is they figured it out. That's the interval they needed to pit for tires. Depending on how long this caution is and when they go back to actual green flag running, I believe that, the, that most of them will have enough fuel to make it. It's going to be close. It's going to be fun to watch. If it does do that, then the guys whose cars are set up for the long runs will absolutely have the advantage there if there are no more cautions because that, that will be the longest run that they've made all day. And, of course, at this very moment, there are 92 laps to go. But when they come in and make their stop, it'll be 91, and they'll run around under caution for a couple of three laps, and that's how we came up with a number of roughly 87 laps of green flag racing, barring any uh, further cautions. So the stop's now being made. Lap 302. Wallace, Wardburg, Dale Jarrett. In that order, Steve. And Earl Barber, the jackman, gets the right side of the car up in the air. No chassis adjustments on the number two car. Four tires and gas for Rusty Wallace, Ralph Shaheen. A clean windshield along with four tires. Now they're going to take a half a pound out of the right front for Dale Jarrett, the race leader and points leader. Or points leader, at least, at this point. And he is down and away. And we go to Glenn Jarrett, 17 points. Burton just pulled out in another fantastic pit stop, 16.5. They changed four tires of fuel, made a very slight air pressure adjustment. They had talked about doing a track bar adjustment. They decided not to do that. So a great pit stop for Jeff Burton. Back up to Eli. That pit stop clock brought to you by Quality Care Service. The same kind you can get at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealer. So we are under caution. Only the second time today do the teams have enough fuel. That's the question on everybody's mind. We're back in a moment. That graphic says it all. Top secret microwave popcorn 400, and it's been popping here today. A lot of action here in the final few moments of this event. One lap away from going back to green. And, Ralph, that'll mean about 88 laps if we don't have any more cautions from here to the finish. Eli, it's going to be very tight, but I've spoken to both Tommy Baldwin, the crew chief for Warburton on the 22, and to uh, Todd Perry, crew chief for Dale Jarrett, and they both say that they can't go all the way on fuel and tires from here, but it's going to be awfully, awfully close, Steve. Well, Ralph, I just talked to Robin Pemberton, Rusty Wallace's crew chief, and just put the question to him, Robin, can you make it the rest of the way on gas? And he said, yeah, we can make it on gas. It's the tires that bother me. It's the end of the race, if it stays green, it's going to be quite a struggle for the drivers, Glenn Jarrett. Exactly the same thing that was told to me down here by Jeff Burton's crew, uh, Steve, that uh, they had no problems with fuel. It was tires they were worried about. I went and asked Jimmy Maycar with uh, the crew chief for Bobby Labonte. Exactly the same word. So they all know that they can make it on fuel. Tires are the big problems. I guarantee you, for the first 30, 40 laps of this run, you're going to be hearing crew chiefs admonishing their drivers, take care of your tires. We've got to go to the end of the race. So let's see who can and who can't. Cars in. Ready. Ready. Green flag, green flag, green flag. Back to work we go, lap 307. Mark Martin's chance to get back on the lead lap if he can get by the 22. 
That shot brought to you by Midas. Go safely, go Midas. Another of the Midas ball cans. Saw the speeds flickering up there on the Jugs gun readout. Bobby Hamilton almost ate that camera. He came off the corner so high. Ward Burton, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Burton. That's your front three. Dale Jarrett fourth. Bobby Labonte is fifth. Sixth is Sterling Marlin. Seventh, Jeremy Mayfield. John Andretti is eighth. Bobby Hamilton ninth. Tenth is Mark Martin. Steve Park is running in 11th. Jeff Gordon now in 12th. Not on the lead lap, remember. Only nine teams are on the lead lap. Back to Andretti. But the 24, haven't talked much about him today. He was way behind. But the Rainbow Warriors gave him a great bit of pit service and got him closer to the front. Now running in 13th, the lap down is Jeff Gordon. Only Mike Bliss and Brett Bodine in the garage. And watch this scramble right here. Jeff Burton for second. She's strong. He's been strong all day, Eli. You're absolutely right. I was just going to say that myself. He's, he has run a beautiful race, and that car has been tough lap after lap after lap. You know, in the spring here, well, February, I guess that wasn't really the spring. In February here, <laughs> Jeff Burton won the Bush Series race. Mark Martin won the Winston Cup race. Yesterday, Mark won the Bush Series race, and I was talking with Burton this morning in his trailer, and he thought it'd be only fair if he won here today. Makes sense to me. Yeah. He has five top fives in the last eight races here. Here, Jeff Burton does. Better top five percentage than anybody else in today's race. In fact, still looking to win here, though. So the brothers Burton are first and second right now. Ward ahead of Jeff. Boy, Rusty's hanging right in there, though. He's not letting him have an inch on this deal. So much for conserving tires. Leaders go around Ricky Craven. And Jarrett now moving in at just about uh, eight or ten laps, and here he comes after a restart. The car is really good on long runs. the better that 88 goes for sure i just said that. yeah i know you did i want i want to i want to underline that make sure nobody missed that because that has really been the story of the day he's been so good on the green flag situations when they put four tires on that car dj is real careful he doesn't abuse him but as the race wears on he gets faster of course remember the team's on the lead lap the two Burton brothers, Ward and Jeff, then Rusty in third, then Bobby Labonte in fourth, then Mayfield fifth, Sterling Marlin sixth, and Freddie. Jarrett, you see, right there, trying to find the opening. He's in fourth place. Ricky Craven has just pulled back into the pit area again. Well, I tell you what, it's tough to get a spot here. Look at the way these two cars are almost evenly matched right now. And that is third and fourth up for grabs. Jarrett, with whom we're running, and Rusty Wallace. Jarrett's never won a Winston Cup race here at Rockingham. Rusty has won more than anybody else in today's race five times. Skinner in the 31, he's running an 18 spot, not on the lead lap. Well, Jared has put him away. Take your time, show some patience, get the job done. So Jared is up to third behind the brothers Burton, who you see in the distance. Ward is the race leader. He's got two and three tenths seconds on his brother Jeff. And Burton has three and eight tenths seconds on Jarrett. That is never a good scene. 
particularly if you're a Dale Earnhardt fan. We are under caution, lap number 322. An accident, backstretch. Wally Dallenbach and Dale Earnhardt, the cars involved at lap number 321. There you see Wally throwing out the, uh, looks like a soft drink or a drink canister of sorts, as we are under caution here at The Rock. Let's take a look at exactly what happened. This came off turn two onto the backstretch. Well, there it is. Ah. Looks so like Earnhardt tagged the wall. Coming out of the corner, yeah. hit the outside wall. Yeah. Then Wally got hit from behind as he checked up, and the fellas behind him did. Oh, Earnhardt oh, just nailed the wall coming out. And nailed there it is. hard. Dale, obviously okay, but uh, caution. Mark Martin did get his lap back. Pit Road is closed at this moment as they bring an ambulance around to check on the guys. Dale Earnhardt now apparently will not finish this race, so we'll have a couple of DNFs in 1999. Previous to today, he finished uh, 41st here at Rockingham back in February, remember? He had that accident. And he was in 40th place in Atlanta when handling problems put the good wrench machine behind the wall. So I'm waving the crowd. Last week's winner, not going to finish today. He gave that wall a pretty good lick. Oh, yeah. There it is right there. I mean, he took a chunk out of that concrete and the, uh, and they see the metal bars there and all. Look out, went up, up the wall there too. It tried to climb the outside wall. And remember too, about 10 laps earlier, watch what happened here. Went way wide and then came down. Well, he and DJ got into it. So now they're gonna open the pit road for lead lap cars. That is J.R. Rhodes on the right of your screen, the public relations representative for Dale Earnhardt, walking with his driver, making sure he's okay. And the pit stops are going to be made if the leaders choose to come in, as one expects they would, at lap 325. Uh, Ward did a little fake. He didn't drop down instantly, but he's coming down, and so is everybody else on the lead lap. Here they come, lap 324 of 393. Ralph, it's yours. Well, Dale Jarrett is planning on making a small change as far as bite. They're going to take a little bit of bite out of the car. They're dealing with the cloud cover. The 22 is going to stay exactly the way they are with their setup. They're very happy with it, Glenn. And I'm down at Jeff Burton's pits. They have had fantastic pit work today. His car's also a little tight, Ralph, so they're going to take a round of bite out of the left rear. There was a lot of discussion about whether we're going to do it. Finally decided on the left rear. Right sides are uh, on, left sides down, and once again, 15.8 seconds, another fantastic pit stop, Steve. Well, Glenn, the two car had the same exact strategy. They took a round out of the left rear, four tires. Remember the last stop, they didn't make any changes except to change the tires. This time, a more aggressive move, one round out of the left rear of the number two car. So you have all the action on the pit lane. Dale Earnhardt, Wally Dallenbach, and Jerry Nadeau all going to the garage as we work the third caution of the day on TNN Motorsports. We're back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. Reminder about wrenchhead.com, the ultimate online automotive superstore. It's available to you now. It's the only site you need for all of your automotive repair, maintenance, and performance parts. Why not visit them today at www.wrenchhead.com. Under caution, after Dale Earnhardt, Wally Dallenbach had their problem in the back stretch. Rusty Wallace running in third. Let's see if we can chat with him a moment. Rusty Wallace, it's Dick Bergman at TNN. Do you hear us? Yeah, loud and clear. How's your race car today? Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Come on back. How is that race car today, Rusty? Uh, the race car has been real good. The last set of cars got real all bound up and just couldn't get these. I'm glad we got the caution flag. And see What's the best line for your car today? It's pretty well on the bottom. It's a fast way. 
And we thank Rusty. Obviously, a little uh, little loose connection Yo, somewhere the there. Okay, thanks. Good luck. I don't know if there was a loose connection. Rather, all the radio transmissions going on in and around the area might well have uh, kind of nulled things. Oh, we got the basics there. He had a little uh, setup in that tire that he yeah, didn't really like. Yeah, started binding up a little bit. Yeah. yeah, and he likes the bottom as well. It's a fast way around the racetrack if the car will work there, if the track will accommodate it. Certainly, you use a lot less distance there. Roger Penske, the captain, he's here. Owns the Rusty Wallace and Jeremy Mayfield cars. Rusty's in third, Mayfield's in seventh. Hey, if you're a Jeff Gordon fan, you see Jeff right there. <laughs> that is he trying to get back on the lead lap. He is going to start inside of Jeff Burton. He is the first driver a lap down in 11th spot. We've seen this before. Gets a lap back late and comes on to win. Get ready, Let's see. Get ready, get ready. Green flag, green flag, green flag. 63 laps to go. They're still side by side down the back straightaway. Jeff Burton has the lead of the 99. Certainly no one wants to let Jeff Gordon back on the lead lap if they can possibly avoid doing that because this guy is a threat, absolutely a threat in every race he enters. Now the blue and yellow machine right behind, Kenny Wallace, he is not on the lead lap, but he is a lap down in 12th. So he's chasing Jeff Gordon for position. Well, boy, these two cars right here are as that's Ward Burton right now moving up with Rusty Wallace. Those two cars are flying right now. Kenny Wallace, who you had mentioned, has had just a terrific run the last few weeks. He's got four career top fives, two of them in his last three starts. And very disappointed in his qualifying run. The starter motor locked up. They couldn't turn the engine over on that car, so he had to start deep in the field. But running well now. Meanwhile, Steve is with Dale Earnhardt downstairs. Hey, Dale, first of all, you hit the wall awfully hard. Are you okay? And it looks like you're going to try and get the car back in. Well, it, it'd be worth three points, I think, beat the 25. So I'm not sure we're going to do it. I got the 28 and I got hooked up. I think his bumper was stuck into my bumper, and when I was trying to turn it out the wall, it just wouldn't go. So we knocked the wall a ton, but we was really suffering all day the way the car was handling anyway. So I hate to be out. I wanted to finish, but we're having a tough day anyway. Maybe we go, we'll get him in Phoenix. Dale Earnhardt, he did hit the wall a ton. Now again, the 99 is the leader. The 24, Jeff Gordon trying to get back on the lead lap. The 22, the cat car, that's Ward Burton, Jeff's older brother, who is now running in second. Then Rusty's right behind in third. Jerry Nadeau is coming back out of the garage. He'll be 13 laps down after being involved in the aftermath of that accident before. Rusty Wallace on the bottom, looking for second spot with Ward Burton just outside him. So Gordon stays a lap down. That's the battle for second. Wallace in the blue and white. The black, gold, and red for oh, Ward Burton. contact. came out, touched the 22 of Ward Burton. MCI World Cup. Your one-stop connection to the world, giving you those NASCAR timing and scoring updates, you see. Burton and Wallace. Then another Wallace and a Skinner. <laughs> now, Mike Skinner in the 31, not on the lead lap. He's a lap down in 17. Again, the 55, Kenny Wallace, a lap down in 12. And notice again, see how bright it is? See how many times today the sun has come and gone. I mean, it has been a, a crew chief's nightmare in that regard. First it's cloudy, then it's bright, then it's halfway between the two, then you don't know what to set up for. Now again, it gets cloudy that quickly. And brilliant sunshine yet again. It's been that kind of a day. Well, the nice thing about that kind of a day is if your car is handling poorly, just wait a half a lap, it'll handle better. Mm. 
Kind of like the weather up in your neck of the woods. That it is. Hey, uh... Yeah. <laughs> 55 laps to go. Jeff Burton. Hoping he can pull off the win, but Tommy Baldwin says, my guy's not done battling yet. There is the race leader, Jeff Burton, as we welcome you back to The Rock. TNN Motorsports is with you. Eli Gold, Dick Bergman, Buddy Baker, Ralph Shaheen, Steve Burns, Glenn Sharrett, the whole crew on hand. Jeff Burton having things his way. Burton just taking the lead and pulling away. There you see the 88, Dale Jarrett. He has just picked up five more bonus points. He will lead the most laps today. And as you know, or if you're new to the sport, you get five bonus points. If you lead a lap, five additional if you lead the most laps. So right now, 246 markers between Jarrett and Bobby Labonte. That was the Haviland point recap brought to you by Texaco, a world of energy. Riding with Dale Jarrett right now. Most recently, Rusty Wallace led from lap 264 to lap 302. Then Ward Burton led 303 through 325. Jeff Burton took over at 326. As you see the scramble there for third, all of a sudden, Bobby Labonte bringing his Pontiac back into the picture. Labonte reminds me a little bit of Daryl Waltrip these days, where year after year, race after race, you wouldn't see Daryl Waltrip till the end of the event, and all of a sudden, here he is. And that's what we're seeing right now. Bobby Labonte has just sort of hovered around this group, stayed on the lead lap. Now it's getting close to checker flag time. Here he comes. Pearson used to do that, too, a lot. Yes, he did. He'd look up and say, where'd he come from? And Glenn, all of a sudden, here comes Bobby Labonte. Yeah, Eli, they've been working on that car on every pit stop. They've made some sort of chassis adjustment, usually a track bar or uh, some wedge out of the car. Bobby says the car's still a little bit pushy, but it's, it's not too bad, which will tell me that Rusty Wallace's car still has a tight problem because he just can't seem to hold uh, Bobby off. He's uh, Rusty, uh, Bobby's running him pretty hard, and, and uh, I don't think that Rusty's going to be able to hold him off. But Bobby has a, started out with the car not so good. They've worked on it all day and made a pretty good race car out of it. They have made a great race car out of it. You see Jeff Gordon up on the high side being bypassed by others. Gordon is still now a couple of laps down, rather one lap down in 11th spot. The drop it back on the leader. He's got uh, the car just is not good enough to be able to take that lead lap back again. No change there in that battle for third. Still Rusty Wallace in the two, Bobby Labonte in the 18. Looks like Bobby's trying a little bit more. Here comes Jarrett. Looks like Bobby's trying to back up his dive into the corner each time to see where he has to start. If he can get off that banking and keep the car wound up. He ought to look in the mirror because the 88 car, Dale Jarrett, figured it out. He's really on the move right now. Bobby Labonte's second in points right now. He's third here in the spring, February, led 22 laps of that event. Not had great runs here. His best finish ever in the October race is sixth. And you've got two Pontiacs in the top four right now. Pontiac's got six wins already this year. That's more wins for Pontiac than any other year in the 90s except 93. When Rusty won 10 races and Pontiac had 11 wins overall. Now Ray Smith and Fred Simmons and the rest of the guys in Pontiac have done a terrific job keeping good cars in the camp and working with their teams to make sure that they've got the best of everything. And they've got some terrific cars. And this is one of them right here. Bobby Labonte, the 18, with four wins for Pontiac this year. John Andretti, Tony Stewart, each with one. And there goes Rusty. He'll lose third spot. Maybe fourth May even well. lose fourth, yeah. yeah. It's so hard at the end of the race when you run up front like that to watch other people passing you. But all the while, that man, Jeff Burton, continues to lead. Five 
at super speedway wins already this year. That's the most for anybody and his crew chief, Frankie Stoddard. They're leading at the rock near the finish. Welcome back, everybody. No change in the running order. Jeff Burton, Ward Burton, Bobby Labonte, and Dale Jarrett. That's your top four. Rusty Wallace back in fifth. Mark Martin, sixth. Sterling Marlin, seventh. And John Andretti, Jeremy Mayfield, Bobby Hamilton. Those ten battling amongst those on the lead lap. And everybody else at least a lap down. There you see Ward Burton going around Michael Waltrip. Michael running in 26. Not been a great track for Michael this year. Remember back in the uh, spring race or the February event, ran the last 100 laps without breaks. And so that went to a handful and a half at this point. And kept going. That's and a, kept going, yeah. yeah. Demonstration of either courage or well. Uh, <laughs> he finished 20th courage. that day, Michael did. He's going to run a marathon, believe it or not. He Michael's is. getting ready to run a marathon in South Carolina in December sometime. He's running 20 to 30 miles a week to prepare for that thing. Oh, I thought you were going to really? say two blocks long. Oh, no. Michael's 26 Michael's, miles, he 385 is a, yards. I'm huh? telling you, this guy's a terrific athlete. He really, really is. And so long overdue to win. Gee, everybody thought he was maybe going to win Talladega last I thought he had it last night. Oh, yeah, yeah, that engine blew up. It just what a heartbreaker. Meanwhile, Rusty Wallace is mired in fifth now. Seven and a half seconds behind the leader. There you see Rusty in the number two working around Mike Skinner, who's a couple of laps down in 17th. Steve, what's the deal? All of a sudden, he's up front. Now he's seven seconds, nearly eight seconds back. Yeah, he's dropping back, Eli. We just heard him radio in to crew chief Robin Pemberton, and he said the car is too loose right now. We need Wedge back in the car. If you remember, on the last pit stop, they took a round out of the left rear. So I guess they went the wrong direction. Tough way to have to find it out now with less than 30 laps to go in the race here at Rockingham. Needs a pit stop. If you're just clicking in, Brett Bodine, Mike Bliss, Dale Earnhardt, Wally Dallenbach, the four drivers in the garage. We have had three cautions. Rick Mast lost an oil line back at lap 179. Ricky Craven tagged the wall at lap 300. And then Dar uh, Dale Earnhardt hit the wall, lap 321, after he said he was hooked with the bumper of Kenny Irwin. Wally Dallenbach was there. Jerry Nadeau, host of guys getting together. I was at lap number 321. And that's been uh, the story of the cautions thus far. Eli. Look at the 36. If he's going by here, he's got absolutely no hood on the car, and he's keeping up with all these cars. So much for aerodynamics. Look Jerry Nadeau right there after going into the pits, coming out 13 laps later. Jerry Nadeau moves on next year to Hendrick Motorsports. A terrific ride for him. That's 15th spot on your screen couple laps down, Steve Park and Terry Labonte, but they are battling for position. 15th and 16th. Well, Park better work hard, get himself all warmed up right now, because his ride home is a Harley Davidson. He, oh, it's be chilly today. he and several of these guys rode their bikes from Charlotte here. That's a little over two hours on a motorcycle, and they're going to ride on home, and they don't have the electric gloves or the electric suits. Tough guys. Tougher than me, I'll tell you. Mine's in the garage. Well, we're going to take care of another little bit of business, and we'll come back. We'll stay with you right on through the finish to see whether Jeff Burton can pick up the win. Yeah, there's a bunch of hot air in the area, but that one is the balloon from the Bass Pro Shops. We're back in a moment. <laughs> CNN Motorsports live coverage of the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 is being brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Napa, we keep America running. And by Ford Outfitters, no boundaries. It was the fall of 1995. Ward Burton inherited the lead here at Rockingham after Dale Earnhardt was forced back into the pits to check for a missing lug nut. Burton held on to grab his only NASCAR Winston Cup win here at the Rock. If he's going to duplicate that today, he's going to pick up about a second and a tenth and bypass his brother Jeff, but Ward is beginning to close in on his brother. It was one and a half seconds and 1.3, now 1.1. There you see Jeff Burton 
And Ward now is second and a tenth behind. Jeff has never finished better than third here. He was third in February of 97 here at the Rock. And there's Jeff's wife, Kim, all bundled up against the chill of the day. Drew is telling him, you're doing fine, Jeff Burton. Just be smooth. Be smooth. Remember, in February here, Jeff Burton led the most laps, but he finished fourth. The pit stop cost him the race. Maybe this place owes him one, Eli. He was fifth here last November, and we mentioned third back in February of 97. Has always finished. He never has failed to finish a race here at the Rock in his NASCAR Winston Cup career. what's going on in Ward Burton's mind now having finished twice to his brother already this year here he is in second spot race winding down gosh he desperately wants to win one of these things mm -hmm. it's now one and four ten seconds so this last time by Jeff Burton picks up some distance on his brother Ward there it is one and four ten seconds Ralph do they think they have anything left for Jeff down there? Well, let's find out. We got Tommy Baldwin right here in the crew chief. Tommy, you got anything left for Jeff Burton? I can't hear what you said, but, uh, you know, I'm real proud of all these guys on this 22 team. They worked their tails off year long, all year long. And, uh, you know, that 99 got a good jump on us in that restart there. We're starting to reel him in a little bit, but I don't know if we're going to have enough time. Well, he didn't hear me, but he got it right. He sure did. <laughs> Ward Burton, only one top five finish in the ten previous visits he's made here to Rockingham. That was, as we showed you on that vignette a short moment or so ago, when he won here in October of 95. And Tommy Baldwin was not the crew chief that day. If Ward could win, this would be Tommy's very first ever Winston Cup victory as a crew chief. It'll be ten laps to go next time by. And Ward will be one and three-tenths seconds behind. You saw Mayfield just in your picture there, the number 12 car. There he goes a lap down. That'll be the ninth place man being lapped. Jeff Burton absolutely on a mission, driving flawlessly at the end of this race. He knows it's his to win. No mistakes, no caution flags. It's going to be tough for his brother to get him now. Glenn, what's the tension level like down there? Well, it's uh, it's pretty hectic. In fact, Frankie just jumped down from the toolbox and ran down to the other end. He says right now, you don't want to talk to me. He's talking to Jeff through every lap. But what he did, he went down and talked to the guys in the 12 crew. That was a car that, that Jeff Burton was going to lap next. And he is talking to Jeff almost all the way around the racetrack. Jeff's been asking a lot of questions about how close Ward's been getting to him. So Frankie declines to talk right now because he wants to talk to his driver. Well, the driver's brother is now within one and three ten seconds. You saw the differential there. And this the 124th race since Ward's last win, his only win here at the Rock. Yeah, and heavy traffic right in front of our race leader right now with just a few laps to go. Around Chad Little. There's second place, one and two tenth seconds. You see that countdown, only eight laps to go. And they're side by side right in front of Jeff Burton. Park in the one, Kevin LePage in the 16. Of course, once Jeff gets through this traffic, that's the same deal Ward's going to have to deal with. Exactly right. Riding with Jeff Burton. Good clean entry out of that corner there. You could hear the car really getting good forward bike. In a turn three. What this morning he said he needed was a little bit more bite. They've got that bite dialed into the race car now. It'll be five laps to go. Problems for Matt Kenseth in turns three and four as he is showing some smoke behind his automobile. But he gets out of everybody's way. There's Kenseth taken to the apron of the racetrack in the DeWalt Tools entry. Problem. But he gets away and out of harm's way, and we stay green. Talking to the 
the spotter, trying to persuade the spotter to run down to the number one car, Steve Park. Asking to move out of the way, let the leader go. Kim Burton, worried, looking on. I don't think there's any wife out there who telegraphs her emotions more than has Kim Burton over the years, dating back to that very first win and right on through now when winds are coming at a more plentiful rate. Yeah, you can see why Ward is closing in quite, quite quickly right now. Oh, yeah. They're both in the same picture. Four to go. Brother against brother as they close in here at Rockingham. Matt Kenseth takes his car to the garage, but all the attention is on the brothers Burton. Three miles to go. Eight tenths of a second to make up. Jeff Burton looking for his sixth career win. 1999, sixth win of the year, shall I say. All on super speedways. Look, look at this, Eli. Look how close they are now with just two laps to go. It would be Jeff Burton's first Rockingham win. And the 11th victory of his career. Started in the background looking in every direction. Kim says, I can't sit. <laughs> she said, go, go, go. White flag. Ward is closing in. But in three quarters of a mile, can he get there? Around Kenny Wallace. Two within a car length and a half. Up the bank and goes Jeff Burton. But Ward is not going to be able to get there. Out of turn four to the stripe. Give the checkers again to Jeff Burton by car lanes over his brother Ward. Bobby Labonte crosses third. Then Jarrett fourth. Rusty Wallace fifth. Let's go to Glenn. He's in the middle of that celebration somewhere. I'm going to climb up here and get a word with Frankie Stoddard. He's still talking to his driver, Jeff Burton. And boy, it's a lot closer than you hoped. But what a good car you had at the end of the race, Frankie. Well, I'll tell you what. What a driver. You know, what a crew. Them guys, uh, they got us out in front right there at the end. I'm glad that they let me still change tires. You know, if I don't do it next year, that might have been my final glory. Uh, what a great stop there at the end to beat the 22 out. You know, uh, Tommy Baldwin does a great job in Ward, and, uh, you know, those guys ran great today. I don't know how we won this race. Uh, we, we were junk at the beginning of the race. We've made so many changes on the car. Uh, this, is, this is the greatest race we've ever won as far as making as many adjustments. We never had a good enough car to win. And uh, somehow we worked it out. The guys just did a great job. And Jeff Burton, uh, wow, what a job. XI batteries, Ford Taurus, everything. Great. It was great. It was a great car. As I said, they worked on it all day and uh, did a fantastic job. Got it right at the right time. And our congratulations to Ward Burton as well. His sixth top five of the year. His 16th top ten finish of 1999. The Brothers Burton gave us our money's worth today. We're back. Victory Lane next. TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn 400 has been brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. And by AC Delco Automotive Parts. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. <laughs> Celebration time in Victory Lane. Yeah, we're here, but hold on. Don't step on that popcorn. I'm going to eat that. <laughs> Come on down here, man. What a great job you guys did getting you in and out of pits all day long and adjusting on that race car. I know it wasn't what you wanted at first, but, boy, it was right at the end. Let me tell you something. This XI Ford was a lap car. It was a lap car. Frank and everybody kept working on this thing. And uh, I had, I mean, we were a lap car, literally. And they kept working and working and working, and they finally got this thing to where it would run. And I'm just so proud of them. I mean, that's just a ne never quit attitude right there. Goodyear tires were awesome today, and it's pretty special to win uh, one of our sponsors, one of our sponsors' race. That's always neat. <laughs> well, it was neat. I was, well, you got another sponsor there too, with uh, with uh, frozen Coca-Cola. Got the family in here with him. Jeff, we saw a lot of guys, including yourself, uh, at various times during the race today, having to go to the very top on the very bottom, trying to dig it around anywhere you could to find a group. At the end there, what worked best for you? Well, the middle worked best for me. Up high, I was too loose. Uh, and the middle was why I was better. You know, I just can't believe we won this race. I hate it for Ward. I really do. I know that's a heartbreaker for him. Uh, you know, one day he's going to turn this thing around. He's going to start kicking my butt. But uh, I really do hate it for him. They had a great race car. And, you know, everybody says, isn't it fun racing your brother? Well, 
it's no fun, you know, having to beat your brother. It's no fun at all. And I, I know they're disappointed, but they did a hell of a job, too. Well, they did. Now, you talk about heartbreaker. Turn her around here and introduce us to her. What a good-looking little girl. This is the boss of the house. Well, actually, my wife's the boss, and then, then my daughter, and then Jack. <laughs> that's kind of my, that's kind of the way I work. It's the hierarchy. Well, uh, what about the dinosaur here? What's his name? I don't know what the dinosaur's name is. She's probably just happy to still have it. <laughs> well, we're going to let them go celebrate. They're throwing popcorn everywhere. I tell you, they worked awfully hard. Congratulations to Jeff and all of his crew. They did a great job. Way to go, man. 25th different driver to win at Rockingham over the years and the 13th Ford win of 99. Look what happened after the race. Uh, Jeff pulls over. He and Ward exchange a quick pleasantry. But, indeed, it's going to be tough for Ward third time he has finished second in 99 and all when his brother has won las vegas the southern 500 at darlington and ralph now today here at rockingham wow it's unbelievable isn't it eli i mean three times ward second in all to your brother uh, what did you say when you when you guys when you stopped alongside you there on pit road i didn't say anything this time made me mad the other two didn't bother me as much but i was actually and still am just mad you know i don't even want to say how i feel right now but main thing is my caterpillar team keeps giving me better cars every week and uh, they did again today pit stops awesome motor awesome got the car better as we went had a lap car uh trying to get the lap back and it got him about 200 yards in front of me and a few more laps would have got it but we just ran out of time you talk about being mad it's a competitive kind of mad isn't it and can you describe what what kind of a a uh, competitive man that is for those of us that don't compete as athletes? He, not only is he my brother, but I've finished twice, three times. I mean, we, we want to win a race, and hey, I don't expect him or anybody else to give it to us. It's just just the circumstances. Um, obviously not mad at him. His team's been doing a great job for him, and he's been with that team for a while. But it's going to be one of these days we're going to turn around, one of these... You know, Funny you should say that because that's exactly what he said down in Victory Lane. He figures you're going to be taking him pretty good here pretty soon. What would you say is the one thing that's keeping this team from uncorking a big streak of four or five wins maybe? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, it's just circumstances. Uh, I mean, we could go back over this whole race from start to finish, and I don't know what we'd do different. Uh, it's just circumstances. The car, was the car good enough to win the race? Uh, we just ran out of time. There's nothing you could do over. I, I'm not looking back. Um, if we don't want to race this year, we've had a winning season. I'm, I'm really happy for Caterpillar and Siemens and Mountain Dew, mb and a and all their sponsors. And Eli, as you know, this team is all staying together. Tommy Baldwin is re-signed and Ward's not going anywhere. So I think they're right. With their determination, they're going to hit on this thing. And once they do, I think Jeff's right. Look out. Yeah, we're going to be talking to them in victory lane. There's no doubt about that. So the cat team takes the war wagon back to the garage. We've got some more coming up from Rockingham. There's your unofficial top 10. The full rundown when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. The fans filing out here at The Rock. They saw quite a battle today. The brothers Burton, Jeff defeating Ward with Bobby Labonte and Dale Jarrett rounding out the top four. Fifth place going to Rusty Wallace. We are in there somewhere. That's that new tower they built a few, uh, couple of years ago now here at Rockingham to accommodate the overflow media, the luxury suites, and so on. Meanwhile, down in the garage area, Steve Burns caught up with Mark Martin. Well, Mark, sixth place finish today. Tell us about your day here at Rockingham. You had a great weekend overall. We really did, and we had a good run today. We had a couple of problems and actually overcame them and still wound up uh, finishing sixth. So um, probably, you know, probably couldn't have done a lot better than that if we hadn't had trouble. So I guess it's a good day for the Valvoline team. We had a crew member get injured on pit road, and we had uh, several other glitch-ups. I uh, slid through my pits uh, on a green flag stop. So, you know, it was just one of those days. Uh, we had a couple of problems, but it sure could have been worse. And we had a pretty good race car. We just, uh, we chased some stuff around today and didn't, uh, we were pretty strong there at the end, but we had to come from way behind to, to you know, come from 10th to 6th is all we could do. Mark, you've said, uh, made it public that you're going to have back surgery as soon as the season is over. And I know you don't like people to feel sorry for you, but how do you feel in the race car towards the end of the season? And I feel good in the race car. It's just the rest of it that isn't as much fun. You know, uh, it doesn't bother me in the car at all. Not Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Mark Martin down in the garage area with Steve Burns. 
as Jeff Burton picks up the victory here today. And uh, our unofficial tallies, Glenn, uh, show your brother still with a 246-point lead leaving Rockingham. Yeah, Eli, that's what uh, that's the way I figured it because he uh, he got the five point bonus for leading the most laps, and Bobby Labonte led a lap, so for a couple of laps, so it all washed out to uh, to no difference there today, Dale. Your your car was good early on. I heard you saying that uh, that you made an adjustment there at the end that uh, evidently backfired on you. But yeah, you know you can only do what you think is right for the car, and uh, uh, we just weren't very good on new tires. We were willing to give that up, but I thought I could make it a little bit better on the longer run, and. And uh, we talked, and it wasn't a lot of adjustment, but it was enough that uh, it just hurt the car. Between that and maybe that set of tires uh, just didn't stick. The tires that I had on this right before that, uh, I was ready to go. Uh, I, I had the car just what I thought would be perfect, and we had about 85 laps or something there uh, if we would have run to the end. And uh, that's just what I was looking for to uh, try to make a run at them. But uh, all in all, it turned out good. Uh, if you look at the big picture, uh, we did what we needed to do. Speaking of the big picture by our tally, uh, 19 is now the magic number. You finish 19th or better uh, in the final three races. And if you lead one of those races, that magic number goes up to 20. So only a few more to go. Yeah, we're gaining on it. Uh, this is getting uh, closer for us and uh, a lot more exciting uh, uh, times for us. Uh, these guys, I hope, are enjoying it. And, uh, you know, we've got three uh, good races left for us. We've got a week off, and we'll go to Homestead and test and uh, uh, get ready for there. So uh, if we just do our job, uh, things are in good shape. But uh, we have to make sure that we do that. Everybody, including yourself, seems to be handling the pressure of all this really well. Well, I, yeah, there's a, a certain amount of pressure, but, uh, you know, our guys, uh, I think, are more excited than they are looking at the pressure. Uh, they're just excited about the prospects of us winning a championship, the, the hard work and the efforts that they've put forth, uh, you know, not only this year, but uh, the three previous years. And, uh, you know, it'd be well-deserved for these guys and certainly for Robert Yates. So uh, I think we're more excited than nervous. Well, they're excited, guys. i tell you what, I'm nervous. <laughs> you know what I think is, is a luxury to them, fellas, is the fact that even if the wheels came off the wagon, even if they finished dead last and Bobby Labonte won a race, they'd still leave that racetrack at this stage of the season with a point lead. That's a, that's a pleasant luxury to have. It's got to be wonderful to be in that position. You know that uh, Dale Jarrett, everybody out there says they want him to win a championship. He deserves one. He's the type of driver that will represent our sport in the right way. So there you see the numbers heading down the final stretch with Phoenix and Homestead and Atlanta yet to go. A good look at The Rock. Back in a moment. Hey, folks, Phoenix International Raceway still has tickets available for the big weekend of racing, November 5th, 6th, and 7th. The Fedlite Southwest Tour of NASCAR, the inaugural appearance of the NASCAR Bush Series for the Outback Steakhouse 200, and the 12th visit to the Desert Mile for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, and the Checker Auto Parts Dura Lube 500. Tickets are available. Just give the folks at Phoenix International Raceway a call. You see the phone number right there. Give them a yell because they are standing by for your phone call right now if you'd like or certainly any day leading up to their big race weekend november five six and seven out in the valley of the sun beautiful setting there adjacent to the australia mountains phoenix international raceway ralph shaheen down in the garage bobby labani and eli we're just sitting here discussing points and so forth so i mean you had a great day but unfortunately you don't pick up a whole lot of points right no not really but uh, you know uh, you know, Dale's a great driver here. I mean, this is he's run so good here for so many years, and the H team and Todd and all those guys, they do. I mean, they got great race cars week in and week out, and this is one of their better racetracks. So, uh, you know, unless something happens, you know, we're just, uh, you know, we're really just racing in for position on the racetrack, and points just keep uh, trickling up and down, but uh, not making much change. But the uh, Interstate Batteries, Pontiac, uh, Jimmy Makar, all the guys did a great job today. We uh, didn't have a third-place car for the most of the day, and we came on better at the end and could not run with uh, Jeff or Ward on the, after we went back to green, but uh, kind of even out with them there after about 20 laps. Was there one particular thing that you changed at the end that really made the difference in how the car performed? Well, yes and no. I mean, we, we adjusted on it throughout the day, and we put it back where we had it the second stop, and then we made some more adjustments after that. We just dropped the track bar down just a little bit. Uh, we had it up a couple times. We had it back down a couple times, and one time down wasn't good. One time up wasn't good, so uh, we just kind of made one shot at it, put a pound of air in uh, one of the tires, and it uh, seemed like that was a little bit better. He told me just before here that uh, you just come in from Phoenix before this weekend. Have you been out there testing, and are you ready for the upcoming race? Yeah, we went out there uh, last week and tested a little bit, and uh, that's not one of my better racetracks either, so I uh, figured we'd go out there and see what we could do. And they got a little different tires, so uh, I think it, I hope it helps us out. 
we've uh, you know seemed like we ran pretty decent out there this time so uh, last time we just weren't we just didn't hit on anything so uh we're basically on vacation i think so this time i think if we get everything right we'll uh, hope to be a lot more, more more competitive okay bobby thanks a lot for sticking around eli all right, guys, thank you very much, and a good job for Bobby Labonte coming home in third. Now, as the fans file out, time for us to bring you the AutoZone Tech Fact, brought to you by the more than 2,500 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. Here's Glenn. Thanks, Eli, and uh, you, the fans may wonder why we waited until now to do this, because I ain't going to stand out here on pit road during the race and get run over. I got a few more years left. What we're going to talk about here today is all the lines that are on pit road all the way down pit road from the start to finish see this line here now you look all the way down there's another line there you, you can see my spotter through my camera there that's jeff probes he's at the next line all right there's a red line on the pit wall coordinated with these white lines what these are for are timing lines these are the lines that nascar uses to time the cars on pit road so they can time them from any one of these lines these lines are 150 feet apart Speed road, or pit road speed is 45 miles per hour here at Rockingham. They have a conversion chart up there so they can time a car from any point to another as long as they're between these lines anywhere up and down pit road. That's how they catch these guys for speeding. Now, we saw it a couple of times in the bush race yesterday, and particularly that now that they have lengthened this road here, the pit road at Rockingham, it's one of the longest that we see anywhere we go. It's awfully tough to maintain your patience and your composure all the way down this thing to try to keep the car going the right speed. And if you don't, NASCAR will check your time from line to line, and they'll nail you and have you come back in and visit with them. And that's not what you want to do. And we thank Glenn Jarrett for today's AutoZone Tech Fact, and that's how they keep up with the speed limit on the pit lane. Jeff Burton wins. The top secret microwave popcorn 400. More from Rockingham when we come right back. It just looks so natural. <laughs> Welcome back to Rockingham, everybody. Glad you're with us as Jeff Burton enjoys the spoils of victory with the win here today in the Pop Secret 400. Don't forget, coming up next weekend, the NASCAR Bush Series drivers will be in Memphis, Tennessee. And, of course, their season winding down. Let's find out together who rocks on towards championship. It is the Samstown 250 next Sunday, a week from today, at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time, right here on TNN Motorsports. Buddy and myself and uh, Larry McReynolds going to be here, uh, Glenn Jarrett, the whole crew. I had a chance to visit the Memphis Motorsports Park the other day. I was up there for another assignment and went over to see the uh, uh, the three-quarter mile oval. That's a nice little racetrack. Oh, you were out there cha-ching or cha-ching? <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't pulling the handle. I was there for, uh, as a matter of fact, an NHRA uh, Winston Drag Racing event uh, right next door at the drag strip. There you see the full uh, rundown. Let's take it back so you know where you're favorite drivers came home today good run for sterling and for john andretti both rusty from 25th to 5th hamilton 35th yeah. to a top 10 finish terry labani knocking on the door for a while but then went a lap down and comes home in 14th ricky rudd gonna have to try again to keep that streak of his going tough day for kenny schrader finishing in 30th spot jeffrey bodine had his problems Darrell Waltrip lost a number of laps. Then the fellows who were involved in accidents, Dale Earnhardt, not had good runs here at Rockingham this year. Well, Ricky Craven, another tough finish, way in the back of the field. And Brett Bodine, the first retiree with an engine problem, sending him to the garage. Now, what happens at this stage of the day when the race is done and the fans are pretty well gone? The chassis dyno rolls out. And this is a device that NASCAR began bringing into the races a couple of years ago to try and find out who had a better engine than whoever else might be running in the race. Right now, they got Ward Burton's car up there. All the top five cars except the winning car, which is still in victory lane, are lined up to go on this thing. You look at the back wheels of the car. They're going to fire it up, and underneath the back wheels, they can determine the horsepower that is produced right to the ground. Uh, this is better than an engine dyno. An engine dyno, they have to take the motor completely out of the car in order to do that. Here, the power has to go through the clutch, the transmission, the rear end, the rear axles before they actually measure it. So this is the absolute best way to measure the amount of power any one of these cars is putting on the ground. 
Exactly. Why is NASCAR interested? They don't want to have anybody have an undue advantage, either aerodynamically or horsepower-wise. Yeah, and it's got rollers right there, right in front of the uh, wheels there that turn and actually tell you. And also, this fan right here keeps it just like the air is blowing in on the racetrack. Yeah, that'll keep the engine cool so it doesn't overheat while all this is going on. So the chassis dyno rolling out front and center here in the NASCAR Winston Cup garage. We're coming back. We'll visit with others. I think Rusty's going to be with us when we come back as well. We are back here at the Rock. The fans filing out. And the race winner's car now being pushed back towards the inspection station. Jeff Burton gets the win. Mark Martin had himself a good run. We heard from Mark earlier. Brought car number six home in sixth spot. Let's hear from Jimmy Fennig, who calls the shots for that Valvoline team, Ralph. Well, Eli, uh, just this past weekend, NASCAR released a press release saying that they have okayed the body for the new Taurus for the year 2000. And uh, Jimmy, Roush Racing had a lot to do with the downforce body that was going to be built for the 2000 Taurus. What do you think? Do you like what you've got? Are you going to be happy with it? Well, it's kind of early to tell. You know, we... Uh... We kind of built a prototype uh, model over at Roush Racing. Uh, so far, everything looks okay. It looks like we ain't gonna lose nothing. It probably be about the same as what we got right now, but uh, you got a different look, a different front end and a uh, different rear fascia, but it, right now, everything looks okay. We don't look like we're gonna be any worse, but um, looks good. Right now, Eli, the teams are just waiting on the last few templates before they can start building bodies. It was Penske Racing that actually did the Speedway prototype and then Yates Racing consulted with both Roush and Penske and there is uh, Jack who's down there you heard the uh, chassis dyno in the background just uh, roaring as the Caterpillar machine was uh, put through its paces and a lot of the team owners and interested onlookers check out on those numbers and how about a round of applause for Jack Roush there have been four Winston uh, four Winston Cup and Bush races here this year total he won all four of them. Indeed so. A few minutes ago, Steve Burns chatted with Rusty Wallace. Let's uh, revisit that conversation. Well, Rusty Wallace finished fifth today. Rusty, on the last stop, we heard you guys made a chassis adjustment. Uh, tell us about the change. Did it help? It looked like it hurt. Well, what happened was the car was really good all day long. I mean, fantastic. And I'm so proud of the car, the team, to have a car that could get me just driving from 25th to 1st. It was that dominant today. And everything was going great. And then all of a sudden we changed tires, went back out, and a car was just not handling nothing like it has been all day long. So because of that, we were kind of thinking the temperature was changing. So we took some wedge out of it at the very end of the race. And when he put another set of tires back on it, we found out that set of tires just wasn't uh, green with everything else. And the car got real loose at the end. And I just had to save it and bring it home fifth. Rusty, I don't think people understand how difficult it is to win a race these days. I mean, you've, you've been gunning for your 50th, but gosh, it's just everything has to be just right to win. Yeah, it really does. And I got to tell you, I really thought that I had it today uh, when a car was that dominant. When you qualify as bad as I did, and we've been qualifying pretty good this year, but qualified bad and got from, actually drove from 25th up to the lead and led to halfway bonus and got all that money and, and led a lot of laps. I really thought the day was a day. I thought we had our 50th victory today for myself, the team, Mr. Penske, uh, all our sponsors, everybody. And then you get, uh, you change tires and it went nuts on me. And so then you find yourself chasing that. But it does make you wonder if it's weather, if it's tires or track conditions or what it is. But whatever happened, when I put the last set back on, it was back okay. But that adjustment we made in the chassis is what KO'd us. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Rusty Wallace says he chatted with Steve Burns. And there's... Uh... Jeff Burton's daughter playing with a little of the popcorn in victory lane here at Rockingham. When you win, the whole family enjoys. When you don't, you suffer together. Today is Jeff Burton's chance to smile. Welcome back, everybody, up atop the roof of the Rock, the North Carolina Speedway. Hey, get ready for a full week of motorsports coming up before too much longer. There's critical points races, as you know, in NASCAR Winston Cup, the NASCAR Bush Series, and the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. Plus, there's all kind of racing specials throughout the week. The fourth annual TNN Salute to Motorsports. It starts on Monday, November the 1st. Check it out. It's all right here on TNN. I hope you can make your plans to tune in because we have got a bunch of racing coming your way here down the final stretch. Doing a little uh, calculation here for Dale Jarrett to clinch the championship 
after Phoenix to do it after the next race. He would have to leave Phoenix with a 371-point lead over, uh, over Bobby Labonte, which would mean he'd have to pick up an additional 126 at Phoenix. Not likely to see the title wrap up in the Valley of the Sun. No, in fact, almost certainly uh, it's not going to happen. But DJ, by the same token, has had just a terrific year. Today was his 22nd top five, uh, just five times out of the top ten. Incredible. A lot of the interviews you'll see on your local news and the pictures you see in the paper being shot right now down in Victory Lane. All the different sponsors getting their moment in the sun as they change the hats atop uh, Jeff Burton and what's been really a beautiful day here at Rockingham. A little bit of a chill in the air, but uh, nevertheless, the fans saw themselves some fine racing. So again, the magic number for Dale Jarrett is now 19th or better. If he finishes 19th or better in all the remaining races, regardless of what uh, Bobby Labonte does, the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship will be his. Coming up next, we've got more coverage for you on the East Coast. NASCAR Garage will be coming up right here on TNN. And those of you on the West Coast, race day is coming your way. So wherever you are across this great country of ours, we've got more racing goings on. NASCAR Garage on the East Coast and race day coming your way live on the West Coast right here on TNN Motorsports. Next weekend, we will be gathering in Memphis, Tennessee. That's the next stop for the NASCAR Bush Series. Only a few races left in their battle for the 1999 NASCAR Bush Series Championship. The Samstown 250. That is next Sunday, 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, right here on TNN Motorsports. Buddy and I will be there along with Larry McReynolds, Glenn Jarrett. And Buddy, glad you hung with it because your voice well, got better as the day went. I know you don't feel all that great, but it's been great having you on board today as always. Well, thank you guys for having me up here. I tell you, I never realized what what it means to have a voice even as bad as mine is when you lose it man you did just it's fine killer. we'll see you in memphis next weekend and uh, doctor we'll see you in a couple of weeks out in phoenix arizona looking forward to it that like this is a fun place always is a lot of fun we had a lot of fun today a little beating and banging to spice things up but that's racing dale earnhardt tagged the wall there Climbed out okay, but climbed out to a 40th place finish. But conversely, it was Jeff Burton who climbed out to the cheers of his wife, Kim, and picked up yet another win on the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Uh, thank you again to Buddy Baker and Dick Bergren and to the guys in the pits on the garage. Steve Burns, Ralph Shaheen, Glenn Jarrett, job well done. We'll talk to you next weekend from Memphis for NASCAR Bush Series Racing Sunday at 1. I'm Eli Gold, bidding you so long from Rockingham.